All right, good evening, folks. We're going to be starting out immediately by asking a question, as you can see on the monitor behind me. In regards to the case the FBI is attempting to build against President Trump, in regards to the charges they're suggesting that they have on President Trump, are they just making this all up? You see what I have on the monitor. Trump, is the FBI making it all up, or do they actually have some legitimate case, a legitimate case to make against this one. Folks, appreciate you guys in the comments. Uh, good evening to all of you folks. I was out of town the last few days, so that's why the show did not commence. But here we are, and we're back in full action, full effect. So, do you believe that they actually have a legitimate case against President Trump? Why am I asking that? Well, I'm going to play a clip for you guys. And I want you to listen to this. I may play it a few times in the broadcast, but I want to get your opinion on this, if I can get my audio to, to measure up. Because this is none other than Judge, Napolit uh, Judge Napolitano, if I'm pr I don't want to butcher his name, but if you're a Fox News viewer, you've probably heard of him. Um, he's been on the network as a commentator over the years, several times. So I'm going to play this clip. Not, former President Trump is not accused of retaining classified documents, which is a mistake that he made. He made the classic criminal defense 101 mistake of denying something before he was accused of it. So when he said on the day of the search of his home, oh, don't worry about it, I declassified everything. What is that? That's an admission that he has it. What's it? Well, he's charged with possessing NDI, whether classified or not. NDI is National Defense Information. It is criminal for anyone to possess NDI outside of a secure government facility. So the president is being accused of gathering NDI, securing NDI in his house in a way that's illegal because his house is not a government-secured facility. In fact, as you may know, a Chinese spy was arrested in his house a year ago and obstructing a governmental function when twice the feds came to his home to remove the NDI and he didn't give it to them. So the former president, in my view, is great. There doesn't seem to be any dispute that this material is NDI. Now, I haven't seen it. The material is also human, which stands for human intelligence. That is the most delicate NDI there is. That means that there is evidence in these documents of the foreign spies who are risking their lives to cooperate with the United States. Former president. Okay, so... What do you think? Now, that's Judge Napolitano. He is a longtime Fox News commentator. I always make it clear with my audience, my beloved MAGA audience, I always know you guys are going to be heavily critical if I pre pre present information to you that comes from CNN or MSNBC or some of those folks. This guy has obviously been on numerous interviews with Bill O'Reilly and all over the Fox News network for a number of years. So what do you think? And by the way, yes, um, uh, Chindo also states that he is a judge. Yeah, he's a former judge as well, which is why his name is called Judge Napolitano. So in regards to the, the, the statement behind me, behind yours truly, what do you think? Do you think they're just making all this up? Now, from what I'm hearing, and if you're watching the media, you're probably hearing something similar. That a lot of the a lot of the legal analysts out there do not see this as just an FBI witch hunt. But I'm taking folks in the box, and I'm really curious to see where your mindsets are. Um, because at the end of the day, he's going to have to fight this. Now, Newt Gingrich, Speaker of the House from the 1990s, you may have remembered him doing the Bill Clinton administration. He's the one that uh, navigated the impeachment of Bill Clinton. He has stated that the Republican Party needs to move forward. He's a Trump fan. He he appreciated the uh, the political agenda of President Trump, but he's also stated Trump can defend himself. And he's suggesting that the party needs to move forward in regards to potentially acting as a party that Trump no longer leads. That's Newt Gingrich. Uh, looking in the comments real quick, Trump is not going to jail for what? We're not 
not suggesting that Trump is going to jail right now. We're asking just simply with what the FBI is alleging in regards to him. Is that made up? Where are they getting that from? Is it, is it just a witch hunt and there's nothing there at all? We'll go to Dr. Lars in a while. Uh, Roger Stone said the Republican Party needs to move along too. Wow. That would be, that's crazy that Roger Stone said that. Isn't Roger Stone, um, wasn't he pardoned by President Trump? Lars, good evening. Hi. Good, How are you? Good to have you on. Good evening. So, can you hear me there, Lars? Yes, I can. Okay. I, I've been sick for a while. Had a uh, had a bad cold, but I'm getting better. Well, good to hear you getting better. I was out of town. That's why I was not on. But uh, we're talking about our FBI, our Federal Bureau. Now, I know, obviously, you're in Greenland, so... I don't know if you even know what the FBI represents here in America, but it is our federal organization, our federal law enforcement organization. And yeah, I know they're what accusing, is. yeah, they're essentially accusing Trump of potentially being a being a spy for foreign adversaries. How do you view that over there? That a former U.S. president could potentially be a spy? Yeah, I think uh, there's a potential that since he had the secret. Uh, doc documents with him, so it could well, be potential it, that he had. He had some, so that's why. Yeah, but what about the what about the possibility that they're just making all of this up? Is there any chance that Trump could be totally innocent? I mean, is that is it possible to even view it from that way? Whereas they just want this guy to be prevented from running for office so badly that they're just willing to do anything up to and including accusing them of espionage. Man, I think that would be really unlikely because there would be many, many people uh, agree on do something illegal. And well, if the FBI is the police. <laughs> Yeah. Well, the issue is if if this is the case, whereas he's suggesting that the documents that they're claiming are illegal and that he should not have had in his possession, he's claiming that those documents were declassified, which leads to the second question. Well, there's two questions. First of all, if they're declassified, it should be very easy to show proof of that. But the second question is, why would a president have so many documents in his home? What would be the use of that? We're not talking about a page or two. You know, if he got a letter from Kim Jong-un and he felt that that yeah. was something private he wanted to keep, I could understand that. But they're talking 25, about dozens 20, of boxes. Yeah, uh, 27 boxes. Yeah. And, and, and that. Does that make any sense? Not, not if you have a purpose for them. Yeah. So if what would be let's just speculate, what would be the purpose of having that stuff then? I mean, why would he you know what what could he possibly have been using it for, thinking about using it for? I don't know, some kind of it uh how do you call it? Uh, some some way to use it for himself. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, that's what they're problems. suggesting. That's what they're yeah. suggesting is, is that he. Yeah. Not only are they suggesting potential espionage, they're also getting them with obstruction of justice, meaning that they were asking him cordially, asking him for the documents, and he was deliberately refusing and blocking them from getting them somehow. Yeah, that's what I heard. Uh, yeah. And if you think about that, it's weird. Someone like. Trump would try to keep some secrets of government. He's not the government anymore. So why should he try to keep them secret? Yeah. So let me just ask you this. Over over there in your country, in Greenland, how would they, if, let's say, for instance, a leader was caught committing an act of espionage, what would be the punishment over there for something like that? Uh, life in jail, I think. But uh, yeah. in Greenland, uh, you get caught for even smallest thing. I remember uh, one of the ministers in our government was uh, uh, terminated from her job for having used uh, $75 of worth of for fuel. 
<laughs> well, he, he can't be terminated from the job because he's no longer president. But at the end of the day, I suppose he could be prevented from running again. I mean, that is a possibility. Um, looking in the comments real quick. Stop excusing Trump. He's corrupt as fuck, somebody said. But also, Jimmy, that wasn't Jimmy. The documents he had were declassified, says the butcher. Now, real quick, real quick to the butcher. Um, that should be easy to prove, right? Just like with the election. If you thought the election was not held properly, show proof. Well, if you got documents that you were certain that were declassified, there would have to be proof of that. Does that, does that make, not make sense, Lars? Yes, that's it. If if they were defect de, de, classified, there's a uh, you have to fill up forms and people have to know and people have to get uh, yeah agree on that that all the uh, procedure has to be all done correct way. So it would be quite easy to put uh, put up the paperwork. Yeah, and I and I would dare say the same thing that if he did declassify him, which I do believe from what I've understood that he had to he had the power as president to essentially declassify almost anything. But there has to be a process to let everyone else know it is declassified. You can't just have something in your house and then whenever they catch up with you, oh, that was declassified. Well, no, it should. You there has to be a procedure. But listen, Lars, I got to move it on. Appreciate you coming through. Hopefully, yeah, man. It's much better now, man. Yeah, man. I just want to say some few words. Uh, be sure, listening go. to you. Yeah, for you uh, for last, especially last week. Uh, I heard a lot of people talking about radical Democrats in America, but in from the Scandinavian point of view, you don't you do not really have any radicals. Democratic in America. <laughs> well, our country leans right. I get your point. By Europe standards, there really is no left wing here. When you look at somebody, what we consider far left is Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders over in Europe would probably be almost leaning to the right because you guys are much further to the left than we are, much more progressive. So I, your point is your point definitely lands on me, but I don't know if a lot of other folks. You know, even know yeah, much but, about how things go in Europe or whatever the case may be, but yeah, their point. Uh, yeah, I want to, uh, to to tell people the system you are running on extreme right wing. All all politics in in US are extreme right wing, and you haven't even really tried anything progressive system because we have lived it, lived in progressive system and it works really works for everybody, not just a few, but everybody. Well, oh, you know how they say old habits die hard, man. Maybe one day, but it takes a lot to change the mindset of a nation. But all right, Lars, got to move it on. All right. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Okay. Bernie would be a, what did I say? Bernie would be a right wing according to Western perspective. Uh, Blake, yeah, if you went over to Western Europe with Bernie Sanders mindset, I mean, because he's not talking about socializing everything. And in, in a lot of the Western countries, it's far more, it's read far more on socialist tenants than Bernie Sanders would ever dream of. So yeah, he would not be a very, he would not be anywhere near the way we view over here in terms of being far left. But we're going to be continuing to talk about what we have here. Um, and I'm mainly going off of Judge Napolitano's um, standpoint of just because he's a judge and he also leans right. But I want to give someone, I want to show you guys someone else. And I'll, we'll go to the box in a minute. Um, this woman here, I'm going to show you. Her name is, oh, what the hell? I can't even bring her up right now. I'll, I'll go to the box and I'll show you in a minute. Mr. Full Service. <laughs> That's a hell of a name. Mr. Full Service, good evening. Man, of course, whoever that was there in the box disappeared. Let's try tired of this shit, too. <laughs> tired, good evening. I don't know if I'm having trouble with my box or not, but for some strange reason, I'm trying to bring folks on and it won't let me. Sir, you can mind your business because our constitution says what we are. Uh, Bree Nicole, we do have a constitution and yeah, um, he was not from this country. I don't know if I'd say mind your business because America is often in everyone else's business, but I get your point. 
Um, I don't know what's wrong with my box here. Let me let this one go out and then we'll try it one more time. I, w I wanted to run um, Judge Napolitano because I, I really believe and obstructing he said Trump is not accused of retaining classified documents, which is a mistake that he made. He made the classic criminal defense 101 mistake of denying something. So when he said on the day of the search of his home, oh, don't worry about it. I declassified everything. What is that? That's an admission that he has. It. What's it? Well, he's charged with possessing NDI, whether classified or not. NDI is national defense information. It is criminal for anyone to possess NDI outside of a secure government facility. So the president is being accused of gathering NDI, securing NDI in his house in a way that's illegal because his house is not a government secured facility. In fact, as you may know, a Chinese spy was arrested in his house a year ago and obstructing a governmental function when twice the feds came to his home to remove the NDI and he didn't give it to them. So the former president's situation, in my view, is grave. There doesn't seem to be any dispute that this material is NDI. Now, I haven't seen it. The material is also human, which stands for human intelligence. That is the most delicate NDI there is. That means that there is evidence in these documents of the foreign spies who are risking their lives to cooperate with the United States. Former President Trump is not accused of retaining. Okay. I want to show you. Now, that's Judge Napolitano from Fox. Now, behind me, if I can get all my equipment running, I almost need to have a second person. This woman here. I'll go right to the box shortly. This woman here, her name is Anna, I-N-N-A. -N -N -A. I cannot pronounce the last name without butchering it. Y-A-S-H or something of that nature. This woman posed as a heir, an heiress to the Rothschild fortune, posed as an incredibly wealthy banker, et cetera, et cetera. And the FBI has announced that she actually is a Russian-speaking Ukrainian citizen. She was not posing as any of that. Why is she important? Well, <laughs> as things would have it, very attractive woman, by the way, but as things would have it, here she is, once again, with President Trump at Mar-a-Lago. She has been at his premise. Now, as you heard Judge Napolitano state, not long ago, there was a Chinese spy arrested at Mar-a-Lago. So when the FBI suggests that President Trump at the very least is a security risk, well, he's had two, two, already two people, two foreign nationals posing as someone else kind of his home. Now, I'm not trying to say that we know for certain Trump is guilty of anything, but the fact of the matter is it does not seem as if spies or folks who are faking their identities or having a hard time getting close to this man. And if he also has the documents that you're hearing him accusing him of at his home, is that not troublesome? Okay, tired of this shit. I can actually see you now. I don't know what happened. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I don't know okay. what was going on there for a minute. I don't, I, I don't know. Maybe I had a bad connection or something like that. So what do you think of this woman right here that they're just now announcing pose as an heiress to the Rothschild fortune when she is really just a Russian speaking Ukrainian citizen with a different name that they got her passports and everything out there. She was a complete phony. And here she is at Mar-a-Lago. Like I've been on here before. And like I've said, I don't feel Trump has the best um, intuition when he picks people that are standing around him or being around him. I don't really know too much about her, um, the situation with her. Um, but we also have to think that, what was that? What was her name? Diane, Democratic um, congressman or senator. Diane she had a, she, yeah, she had a spy. And then what was the other guy? Not Kinsler. Um, there was another guy that was on. Uh, he's on the judicial um, committee, and his girlfriend yeah, but, was a spy. Okay. Yeah, but here's here's the difference. I, I get your point, but 
The difference is there are always going to be spies trying to compromise our politicians, including the president. But you don't hear of the of Congress and senators being accused of having documents, classified documents they should not have while this is taking place. And they also are not the former president. So there, there's two things going on there. Well, you know, as far as these documents, does anybody really know? I mean, we only know what we hear and what they're, you know. And you know what? Even my whole point of this is even if they are at this point, and I, we've talked about this before, at this point, why should anybody believe them through everything for the last seven years? Why should anybody believe anything that they say about this man? Okay. The but Russia, you have to also Russia, Russia, you, if, Russia was a hoax. Impeachments were a hoax. Um, we've had uh, New York district attorneys getting elected, saying they were going to take them down. Had everybody, how many times has people said they've got the evidence and this is it and he's going down and he doesn't go down and it comes yeah, to be proven based on, false. So based on what you're saying, based on what you're saying, because they've tried to take Trump down before and it either failed or it looked like they were on some type of witch hunt. From this point on, anybody that accuses them of anything, you're not going to believe it. Well, I'm not saying why should we? Unless we can see physical evidence, unless we can see the physical, why did they redact the whole friggin' um, the whole affidavit for the for the search warrant? Well, let me why ask be you so this. sketchy? If, let me ask you, you know this. what if I mean. They, if you want us to believe you, you, yeah. If they told you that somebody in his inner circle snitched on him, but we can't tell you who that person is, would you be willing to accept that? That's what they're pretty much saying right now. Right. But if they actually told you who that person is, do you think their safety would be in danger? Well, they might, they should have known that when they decided to be, you know, um, a snitch. They, they they should have known. I mean, they knew they were taking they were taking their life or they were taking all the risk by snitching in the first place. You so know in other I mean? words, you believe they should out. So you think they should out the snitch? They should actually tell who that person is because that person you know should have known they if they be can't able to if they can out the snitch liberal, then they if they want us to believe them, they have to give us something better than what they're giving us. Okay. They have to. I don't think you know. Is that it's normal? just like us? It's just like us trying to change your guys' mind. Trying to see the good in 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 Trump's um in Trump's first America first plans or you know the the way he was running the country you know you guys are just dead set against it and I feel and that's how I feel about the world right now nobody's sitting on the fence anymore they're either here or they're here. <laughs> well, in my opinion, I don't honestly know what what they could really give you if you don't trust the FBI. It doesn't matter what they give you. Why would you trust what they present? If if you don't trust the organization and they give you paperwork saying such and such snitched or we found these documents in this house, if you don't believe the organization, why would you believe that they actually found those documents? Exactly. Yeah. So in other <laughs> like words, why, why would I? Right. And that's the point I'm trying to make is that the FBI has to realize a certain segment of the population, you're not going to be able to prevent to present to them enough information to get them on board. They're not going to believe anything you present. So trying to win them over is probably a lost cause. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. And I mean, and I just don't understand. I just don't really understand at this point. Why either, you know, cause I can, I can understand your guys's point of view. I can I can look at the other side and say, OK, I understand. I understand you feel deeply about that. Yeah. But it, it's never the other way. It's never nobody can understand why we don't believe what they're telling us again this time. Nobody believes why um, we feel that the friggin election was rigged. You know what I mean? Nobody understands why we feel that way.
Well, I would say the, the, the election, in, in regards to the election not being held, pro I can tell you why it's hard to, for people to believe that because you got too many folks on your own side saying it's not true. I mean, there's not. Well, a, you got you got Mark Zuckerberg coming out saying, admitting that the FBI told him to suppress the Hunter laptop. Um, you've got you've got the the guy that told him to suppress um, that started out suppressing the laptop is the same guy that came up with the information to to um, get the search warrant for Mar Lago, and he's fired now. Well, he resigned. But, but here's, here's but, what I don't get. Here's what I don't get. Now, you're, you're pointing out rightfully what happened with Mark Zuckerberg, which looks shady. However, if I had talked to you a few days ago about Mark Zuckerberg or someone like Bill Gates, you guys thought they were part of the deep state. But now when they I say do. something that exonerates I don't Trump. Under, I, you know what? I still do. I didn't under, I don't. I think it slipped out. I think he didn't mean to tell it. Sometimes these guys tell the truth without just like when um just like when Bush was given the speech about the Russia invading Ukraine and he um admitted it and when he said Iraq and then he admitted Why you know and, and Iraq though? too. I think but, they but, let the but, truth slip out sometimes. But, but, you no, know, I don't know. I won't necessarily say they're letting the truth slip out. They're saying something you agree with. Because if Mark Zuckerberg said that Trump is guilty, it wouldn't matter if he said it in, in, in public or in private. You would absolutely not agree with that. But when he says something that exonerates Trump, okay, he's letting the truth slip out. So is it the truth or is it something you just simply agree with? Well, I feel it's the truth because they okay. did it. They did ask them. They did. Okay. They did ask them. You know, they did, and he suppressed it. He admitted it. Okay, so what? But when in regards to Zuckerberg admitting that, why don't you believe all of the Republicans that suggest the election was held properly? They're admitting it too. Why don't? Why are you? Why are you dismissing all of the Republicans on your side of the fence that are saying Trump lost? Because I feel, I feel that there's some stuff and, you know, there's, I think there's a decision in politics right now, especially on the right side. You have two choices. You can, and both of them are almost political friggin' um, suicide. You either go with the right or you go with Trump. You know, they, they, you, you can't win because Republicans are getting, scrutinized and censored all over i mean we are the most we are the the new we are the most hated group of people right now that exist well and, and i don't what, disagree you know, with that. and everybody's going to say oh it's okay you deserve it now you know what it feels like or whatever no. you know but i don't disagree with you i don't disagree with you that republicans are right now getting attacked more than anybody. But I will tell you this, when you elect a politician that calls people names and things like that, and you guys are going around saying, fuck your feelings, you'd have to understand there's going to be some consequences to that, right? You would have to know that you're not going to be able to govern smoothly when you have that type of position, or did you guys not even think that was going to happen? Well, we look at it different. We look at it as the ones you can see who is who is really there for um the american people or or you can see the ones that are you know letting them pulling off the sheep's clothing and letting them know that you know they're on their rhinos pretty much you know what i mean i don't know because i don't understand you never hear of <laughs> You never hear of a Democratic um, Republican. You know what I mean? You don't. You never hear. You always hear the rhinos and that. But I, you, the Jim Man or what's his Joe name? Manchin. Uh, Joe, Joe Manchin. Manchin was, Joe Manchin was the closest thing that I've seen be attacked for. Um, and he didn't even really have any friggin' right wing views. He okay. just didn't agree with the bill. Let me, well, first of all, he supports big oil, which is a right wing. By the way, folks, tap the screen. Get your boy up. Try to get your boy up to 10,000 likes. That might be a bit to ask. 
with these patriots in here with what I'm talking about. But I love you, MAGA folks. You ain't gonna necessarily agree with me. But let me say this in regards to there haven't been any dinos, which is what you're saying as opposed to rhinos. Dinos. The there you go. Good yeah, word. Democratic name only is what you're talking about. There, there are not enough Demo there are not Democrats that sell out is what you're saying, but to the Republican Party. But I will tell you this. The reason why there appears to be so many rhinos is because you guys are mislabeling people. Anyone who speaks negatively of Trump says that he should have been impeached or says that he, he, the election wasn't taken from him. You guys call him a rhino. It doesn't matter if that person has been a Republican since they were born. You guys, if he if that person does not speak favorably of Trump at all times, you call him a rhino. So there are a bunch of rhinos on the Republican side because you guys are mislabeling all these people. We're not doing that, at least not right now. I've been calling um, Mitch McConnell a rhino for years. <laughs> I mean, even before then why Trump. why does Kentucky <laughs> keep electing them? Why I does don't. You know what? I keep asking that same question. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I don't understand how a lot of these guys continue to get reelected because they've showed over and over and over again that they they care about their pockets and themselves a hell of a lot more than they care about the people that they want to continue to put them in that seat and they well, act me, that they're like they're not very worried about get, being elected out well let me let me give it to you this way then i, I got a part ways that you're assuming i'll give you the last word yes, but sir. what about the notion what about the notion that those folks you guys are calling rhinos are not the rhinos, and it is Trump who came into that party and wanted to change the party to the MAGA party, meaning that he himself is not a true conservative, but yet someone using the Republican Party to push his own agenda, and that he is the rhino. Do you see that at all? No, I, I you know what, I just... I look at it this way. We wouldn't be where we are right today if it wasn't for both sides. You know what I mean? If it wasn't for both, if it wasn't for both one side um, agreeing, you know, just either not wanting to be, um, not wanting to argue, you know, they sign bills they don't even read. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you just, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. They just do whatever's less confrontational for them and whatever seems to going to keep them in their position and not raise any feathers because you don't want to raise any democratic feathers because they will, <laughs> they will tear your ass up, you know? And like I've said to you before, Mr. Liberal, that's why they don't like Trump because he fights just like them. <laughs> well, he can't do it alone, um, tired. He can't tire of this shit. He can't do it alone. So if you get him back, make sure he understands that you're not you, you need the help of the Senate. You need the help of your Congress. You can't yes, call, and call everybody names and expect to get shit done. Tired of this yes, shit? Sir. Gotta I gotta move it on, man. Good talk. Be good, man. Take okay. care. Okay. I don't know what happened with my box. Always a pleasure talking to tired of this shit, but I don't know what happened with the box there. Let me try and go straight to the box. Bree Nicole. Um, if you see behind me, that is Anna. She is turning out to be yet another individual hanging close to the president that is showing that he may be compromised. I'll give you the spill on her in a minute. Bree, good evening. Hello. Okay, so Howdy. I'm going to preface this. Yeah. Um, okay. With my comment earlier about the Constitution, because that was me. Yes, I saw that. Okay. Okay. So that is just because I'm really, really tired of like the other countries. Yes, I know we supposedly police them, but that's not us. That's that's literally the rule of law that everybody operates. Wait, by. wait, say that again. I didn't hear you said you're tired of what again? I didn't hear that. I'm tired of like hearing when we get on these things instead of us like having I can see an outside opinion. But to say that we haven't tried anything different, it's like we came from something like that. And so we are doing something different. And it, I feel okay. like it's more about accusing tone under it. Like, why aren't you more like us type of thing? Well, and I get your point, but I will tell so you this. It just, when gets you really go to like, other it just grates my nerves a little bit. It's just like, you know. Yeah, I, so I, get your, I, I get your there. point, but yeah, I understand what you're saying. But to me, it's almost like the pot calling the kettle black. Do you realize how many countries we go to and tell them they should be more like us? Oh, I do. A yeah. lot more than you think. 
So, yeah, um, so. and that's, that's because it stems from the UN, the UN charter where we implemented international law at that point. Like that's where it really came through at. And it's, that's very much modeled after our constitution and bill of rights. If you read it, it reads well, states and all. So that's where you get a lot of like that coming in there and like push. We didn't go yeah. into the Iraq. We didn't go into Iraq based on the UN Charter. That was us doing that unilaterally and getting what Bush called a coalition of the willing people. We pretty much begged to to join that movement, but we went in nations and tried to impose our will that had nothing to do with I the know. UN. It was just us. No, that's what I'm saying. With that charter, though, it does implement the international rule of law. So that rule of law is recognized internationally so when you overthrow a government and they become more democratic in a sense um they will operate under that eventually there's very okay. few countries that don't operate within that scope now that's all i was getting okay. at there all right so all i'm right. not talking about going in and flipping governments because i know darn well we do that yeah more than so, anyone else <laughs> more um, than anyone else i would think so I'm just gonna speak. I heard your I heard you play that judges thing commentary, okay? So what I do don't you watch think any of them. I don't watch any of the news networks like that, okay? If I don't see it live streamed, so I can see it for myself where it's not clipped. Okay. Well, let me, let me let me I'll let you but, I'll let you finish. Hold on, I'll let you finish. Let me interrupt you and say this. If you go because I got this off of TikTok. This is not off the, the national networks. If you go to TikTok and type type in Judge Napolitano, he did this on his own page. That's what you're that is a TikTok clip you're I hearing know, of him see, on his own page. That was in poor taste of him. That was in poor taste of him. Because it clearly wow. says I have the I have the document pulled up right here, the affidavit. Okay. And so and maybe maybe it will work for you if you want to try to um the links in the affidavit. I tried to put them in my computer Google search and they wouldn't pull anything up. But okay. why is it important taste? Why is it important taste for a judge to give his opinion on something like this? Because um what he says in there, like him saying that uh they weren't going in under uh classified documents type of thing. I believe that's what he said. Something about the documents they were going after NDIs. Well, yes. in this, it clearly says they're going after classified documents. They even give you the uh, code, the U.S. code for classified documents and which, like, what everyone means. So if you go and look up those codes, you're going to get that. Thank you for whoever sent that. I appreciate that. But you will go and look up those codes, and it does, it has the, um, the classification in there. They even cite mm -hmm. um, Obama's EO on it for, like, who can, like... Um, declassify and everything and see that was another thing it's like everybody's like oh he says he declassified them it's like yeah but he did he said he declassified them so it's not like he declassified them the day before he left like we don't know that we don't know when these documents what documents they are were when they were declassified at the same sense i'm not really standing up for him i'm more or less standing up for the fact that i'm real tired of getting toyed with as a people okay because okay. i will defend anybody's rights on either side i don't care who you are Okay. okay. Well, let me but ask you this. I read this affidavit and I tore it apart in about two hours last night. Okay. Well, well, let me let me ask you this. Regardless of, let's take Trump out of the picture. Do you believe it is possible for a president, a former president, to steal documents that he shouldn't have? Do you think that's even possible? Well, I mean, they do take them, so I don't. I can't say for sure. Like, I would accuse everybody of having something they probably shouldn't have. Like okay. Obama, Bush, all of them. They've all so, taken documents. And, that, and I would that, say there's that, probably stuff in there that might be reclassified now that they probably shouldn't have, depending on what they have and what they have copies of. Yeah, but I'm, I'm asking I'm asking a question. Is like let's say for instance there was like I said, taking Trump out of the picture. Let's just say for instance Hillary Clinton or somebody else did want to commit an act of espionage. Is that even possible for a former president to want to do? Do you think they could actually be in possession of classified documents that they shouldn't have is that even possible for that to happen um it shouldn't be honestly if you think about it it shouldn't be honestly it, they shouldn't because everything should have to like go through nara which is the archivist and then they also get secret service that we pay for and continue to pay for after they're done which is you know an extension basically of the fbi so i would say like if there's government officials in there and they know something's showing up like you know, they shouldn't be able to take them out. 
It's so what you're saying is it's in, what you're saying is it's impossible for a president to have these. I'm not of saying it's not impossible. I just wouldn't say that. I feel like you trusted them for four to eight years. They had access to pretty much all of this, anyways. I'm not saying that they should have it. No, like should they have it sitting there out in the open for everybody in God's green earth? No, but it does on this affidavit clearly state that there are ways to have that stuff and to properly store it. And it's cited in the affidavit. Okay. So if you so read through you're... that and you read through the storage like things on here and the way they're properly supposed to store it, then if it's stored that way, then if they if they can have it stored in the proper way, then sure. We trusted them for so, four to eight years to run the country. Okay, so so let let's take it your way then. If Trump has declassified documents on him. How else, how does the rest of the government know that those class, no, he had documents that were formally classified. He suggested mm -hmm. that, they, that he declassified them. How does the rest mm -hmm. of the country know that those documents have become declassified? How would they know that? I think right now that is a burden of proof put on to the DOJ and FBI because they're the ones claiming that they aren't declassified and they're the ones making the charges. Therefore, they have the burden of proof. It's 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 innocent until proven guilty is what we all want. Right. It's what right. the it's what 2020 summer was. It's what you know we're all screaming for now. So I don't know why one side's all of a sudden all four stepping on you know due process. Like I'm not okay. going to say the right well, didn't do it either, but I'm not sure okay. why all of a sudden they have to pit it against us. And here we are sitting here like, well, well, you know he's going to jail. It's like, well, I thought it was innocent until proven guilty, and I thought that's what we wanted even at our level. Because if they can do this to somebody well, like him or even Clinton, they will turn around and yeah. do it to us. Well, according to the that. affidavit that you according to the affidavit that you that you suggest that you read, they didn't say in that affidavit that they were trying to peacefully get these documents from him and that he was not giving them up, which is why they're suggesting a, 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 a what is it, a obstruction of justice charge their goal with as well. But they're saying that they did come to him. They didn't bum rush him the day after he left office because folks are like. Well, if they really wanted him, why did they wait 18 months? Well, if they had a went after him the day he left office, folks would have been like, well, why didn't they get him in a chance to turn it in? They gave him 18 months is what they're saying. And he was not coming up off the documents. Um, technically in here, it says that with the CBS Miami New News article, the only article that they don't give the link in sight, um, that the moving trucks... It's like two moving trucks show up uh, to Mar-a-Lago. Okay, that's their source for showing that the document showed up at that time, okay? At the end of the affidavit, you read that, let me hear, let me just go down and read this part to you because I have it pulled up. I was ready. Okay. So, okay, come on, go up. So at the end, they're saying, let's see, sorry, I gotta look around you because I have you kind of in front of me. Okay. Okay. I had it at the top, sorry. Appreciate that. Thank you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So it says, based on the foregoing, the foregoing facts and circumstances, I submit that probable cause exists to believe that evidence, contraband, fruits of crime, and other items illegally possessed in violation of 18 U.S.C. subsection 793E, which is the storage, and then they cite the Espionage Act and whatever other one that was, I can't remember off the top of my head, will be found at the premises. Further, I submit right. that this affidavit supports probable cause for a warrant to search the premises. Oh, wait, no, it wasn't in that one. Sorry. Mm -hmm. But basically, they're saying that he didn't have the, let's see, where is it? I don't want to tell you wrong. Okay, sorry. Wrong paragraph. It was the one. It was the next. Okay. Next, let me let me interrupt agenda. you by saying this. Even by what you're reading, by the way, folks. They're no, just that was like the end. Just so you know. Okay. I read the All wrong right, paragraph. Fair. I will admit That's that. That's fair. Okay, fair point. But what what they're they're not just alleging he had documents that he was not supposed to be in possession of. They're alleging that he did things with those documents that he was not supposed to do. So it's going to step in beyond just recovering documents. Didn't, like you didn't, unless that's in the redacted part, that is not mentioned in the affidavit. Because right. I'm telling you, I, I write these things. So and I'm honestly shocked that any judge signed off on just the just the part you can read 
I'm really shocked that they signed off on it. Well, I you told you, I, I write these. You would admit, and you, you would look admit there's page that I, right, but you would admit there's a hell of a lot of it you cannot read, right? Correct, and that's what I'm saying. Just from yeah. what I can read, I, as a judge, would pick this apart, which I did, because like here's the last sentence that I'm I, I was really trying to get it. I do not believe that any spaces within the pr premises, and that's Mar-a-Lago. Um, have been authorized for storage of classification information at least since the end of former POTUS's presidential administration on January 20th, 2021. Okay, so that date's important because that's when his, his term ended. That article that they cite from CBS Miami, that is dated January 18th. So just, just hear me out because technically, technically from the 18th, he still has his clearance to have that stuff at his home, according okay. to that last sentence. Uh, here's, here's so I'm, I'm not but, saying, because hang on, okay, hang on. And I'm going to answer okay. your question. I'm going to answer some All questions right. here. Because then if you scroll up, they, they cite how to store it and everything. And NARA sent a request to the DOJ on February 9th, okay? However, it also says in the first paragraph in the introduction and agent background that NARA also received 15 boxes from okay. a representative All right, I don't, Trump okay, I don't want you to read the, I don't want you to read the whole thing okay, I don't want you to read 18th. the whole thing All so right. I'm just going to say it. they sent it okay, okay. Right, however if you read further down they requested oh, initially okay. in May it's not 18 months I'm going to concede to that because it wasn't 18 months they started requesting it in May of 2021. Then why but wasn't he given? Because, why? What took him so long? Why? If they requested it back in May of 2021, what took him so long to right. come up off of these documents? He, as of December 2021, he had already handed over 12 boxes, according to the affidavit. Then, and they're still trying to get more from him. Why does he have more if his lawyer is saying he does not? He could not, but actually in the first paragraph, it's very telling. Okay, so if you, let me ask you a question. And I just want to, I've been asking everybody this because I'm just curious to see everybody's reaction and for the kid in the back who has questions. If you have an FBI agent on the case, okay, and they're the ones making the case, okay, right. and you are using your knowledge from being on said case, other FBI agents' knowledges, and other federal personnel, government personnel, that's what they're claiming their sources are. There is no inside whistleblower stated in here or snitch or whoever from the Trump people or somebody hired just in as like helping hands. They're saying it's okay. government personnel, All right, let me, other okay, FBI let me, agents, and yeah, the FBI. Okay. I'm just really okay, confused. Let me just say this. You're the first... Okay, you're the first person I've heard because almost every legal analyst on television, whether they're right or left, even on the Sean Hannity show, they're suggesting there's a snitch in his, in his wake. For you to suggest that there's no snitches, you're the first I've heard say that. Everybody believes the main reason I'm these documents are being rejected. Word, Wait okay, a minute, let me, let me respond to you. Let me respond to you. Everybody seems to believe the reason there's so much redacted here is that they are protecting snitches that are around him. You're the first person to suggest there's no snitches around him. I mean, that's what it says, and it's not redacted after that. Okay. Okay, so that's, right. that's one thing. Like, the, they said it themselves on there. So I'm going to go with what they said because they're the source, correct? Like, I'm well, looking at this as, like, what they a non-biased person. Redacted. It's too much. I'm saying, though, to say as that. far as where their evidence and where they're saying they're getting this stuff, they are saying that as an FBI agent on this case, from the knowledge that they have on this case, other FBI agents and other government personnel, that's all they list. They don't list outside sources. I could see them not listing, like saying, and an informant or and a, a helpful, you know, somebody whoever like you would label them different i write these that's what you do you label them different so you can tell them apart from the government so let me ask okay. you this why if they now they're, they're they're suggesting that he has he has documents related to human intelligence be, meaning spies that work for the united states that are overseas 
why would he have that at his house? Even if it is declassified, why would you have information about spies working for the United States and other countries? Why is that at your house? I'm not saying I I don't know for 100 percent fact because that's not listed in here. They are saying that they think it's they uh, think they assume they have. No, no, they no, have they just just say, they, no, listen, it they says say in think. Here, they think because they have not done a full like a full review of it on this right here, right here. What I'm reading to you, it says that they have done preliminary just from looking through it, preliminary look through, okay? There was stuff that said classified, okay? That they had classified again. That's okay. in the affidavit. I'm going with the evidence that's right in front of me. I'm not going to speculation. Say, they didn't say nothing in, in, that, in that entire affidavit. It says nothing about him having uh, documents. Not the stuff that you out. can read. Not the stuff okay. that you can read. I'm saying right. as far as what I can read... It says nothing about, you know, spies or anything like okay. that. It says right. that then. there's a code for it, and that's what it says. Okay, there's okay. there's U.S. codes for it from legislation. However, I am curious, and if somebody could do this, I'd be greatly appreciated because I don't know if it's my computer. I'm using Google. I'm not using anything fancy. Um, the links in that affidavit, mm -hmm. when I put them into my computer, they don't work. The NARA link pulls up absolutely no searches on Google. It's blank on my end. Yeah, I can't. So I'd just be curious right, if Brent. anybody could get that to pull up. So just before we go saying, okay. you know, he needs to go to jail, he needs to go to jail. And I'm going to end on this. I didn't say that. Trump didn't could that. not yeah. put Hillary Clinton away because Trump didn't have that power. Just like they don't have the power to strip him of taking his well, power to run away. So, well, if Trump, didn't, if, if Trump did not, let me ask you this question. If Trump did not have the power to put Hillary Clinton away, when he was debating with her on stage and suggested, if I was president, you'd be in jail, what the hell was he talking about? It's the same thing that Joe Biden's trying to do right now. He's unconstitutional. Okay, but you're, you're not answering in regards to Trump. They you're giving me other they people. They just try to see how far they can go. They don't know. So in other words, and, I mean, I give Trump a Trump little said, more lax, just a hair. Should he know? Yes, you're running for president. But I give him a hair more lax hair because he's not a suit from that's been in there for 50 years. Okay. So, when, so in other Biden words, when Trump, wait a minute, wait a minute. So you, basically, according to you, when he said that if he get if he becomes president, Hillary Clinton would be in jail. It was literally an empty promise based on a lack of knowledge is what you're saying. I mean, they could have investigated her, sure. Would they put her in jail? I don't know. That He can't arrest her. Then why did he say it? Because he probably didn't know, just like Joe Biden's in there yeah. rambling on right. stuff he's doing. He doesn't All know right. either. Okay. I'm giving him I'm giving him equal. They don't know. Except so for when, Trump's was a, so when you got a four-year president, four years, Joe Biden's been in there 50. Some of these people know what they can and cannot do. And that's okay. what's so, irritating because the ones that do know are just, I feel like they're the ones really stepping all over us. So you're traveling around the country holding rallies, letting everybody yell, lock her up, knowing that you have no power to do that, knowing that they're he asking for know. something that's not I'm likely going to happen. He doesn't know until he goes in front of SCOTUS, just like Biden doesn't know until he goes in front of SCOTUS. Should but they he know? Did his, sure. He did that his I am all for president. giving them constitutional quizzes before they can even friggin' run, just to know okay. that, that they know our rights. I am all so, for that. That is not right. a that's not a test of religion or anything. That's just knowing the basic constitution that you're supposed to be governing. All right. All right, Bree. Good talk. I gotta move it on. If you ever see me on again, okay. feel free to come on in. You're welcome back. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. okay. And I mean, that's and that's a that's a point. I've made that point before though, is um in regards to Hillary Clinton, I know a lot of my MAGA folks believe she is corrupt as hell. Hell, as Democrats believe she's corrupt. But that is a point, whereas anytime you bring up what's going on with Trump, you either going to get Hunter Biden, which is also a legitimate point. Hunter Biden is not, uh, he's not, he's not a politician, but if he's committing crimes, go after him. But you hear Hillary Clinton a lot. And I have to bring that question up every time I hear it is that Trump was in office. Trump made promises that if he if he won office, he would get locked up. Now, Bree, my previous caller, is making it clear that was an empty promise. He essentially made a statement based on total ignorance, as she just stated. 
He didn't have power to lock her up, which is why I asked. Then why would he suggest it? And then she started talking about Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden and all of them. I don't listen. When it comes down to this right here, it's looking like, at least according to her, that the FBI don't even know what these documents are. They don't know. They don't even have a job. Facts matter. No true evidence until now. I see that in the comments. Billy, good afternoon. Good evening, facts. Oh, my God. You're going you're gonna to have to pay some doctor bills. That, that, those last two callers gave me an aneurysm, man. Oh my Elaborate. God! Elaborate. Talk to me. Talk to oh, me. Oh, I didn't. I didn't realize conservatives have been practicing contortionism all these years to twist themselves into pretzels over to kiss <laughs> Trump's butt. Oh my God! Anyway, well, the lady says that that is what she does for a living. Oh, so I'm the lady is just it. talking to hear herself talk. Listen, number one, it doesn't matter if he did be classified anything because the three charges they're citing have nothing to do with classification. Check that off. Um, as far as the judge is in poor taste, because he's not, because he's not, uh, he beca well, basically because he's messing with their daddy. Okay. You know, please. I, I will say this, and I will say this. When you watch Fox News as much as I do, Judge Janine Pirro. No, no, I'm talking about Napolitano. Yeah, well, that's Napolitano I played, but Judge Janine Pirro does things like that that are anti-liberal and anti-democrat all the time. She, she, and I've never heard a right wing to say that's in poor taste. Well, get her off the bottle. I mean, come on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then somebody just said in your in your in your comments, the FBI protects the Democrats. Sure, just like they the FBI cited they were investigating Hillary ten days before the election. Yeah, they were looking out. Boy, I wish I had friends like that. Yeah. Oh. And that's often cited. That's often cited as why Hillary Clinton had a difficult time is that Comey announced that she was being investigated like 10 days before the election. So, yeah, the idea that the, the FBI protects the Democrats. I didn't hear that when, when he did that. I, yeah, that's I don't know what to do with that. Go ahead. And as far as what she's saying, first off, if Trump had just given the damn documents back when they asked for them. We wouldn't be here. Yeah. Period. Well, what threw me off, what threw me off is when I asked her, is it even possible for a president to illegally possess classified documents? And she was like, well, it shouldn't be. And I mean, so in other words, he cannot commit espionage based on what she was saying is because That's she wouldn't even suggest if he could even have illegal documents to begin with. He's not president. He's a he's a yeah. he's a citizen. That's all he is. That's nonsense. Well, I had to let the woman. I had to let her talk, though. Well, I, I know. Was and, and talk she did, um, yeah. but I mean, I mean, my chickens cluck a lot too, but they don't say much. Um, <laughs> so, do they got this man good? Do you do you think this is a witch hunter? Do you think they legitimately have this man good to rights? Well, I, what's your definition of a witch hunt? Just making up some shit out of thin blue air. So, but essentially, to summarize that, dog. Uh, going to look for something that you know isn't there. Right? Essentially, what's on the monitor behind me is the FBI yeah. just well, making it the all FBI up. Went the through, went to, FBI went in front of a judge. They stated what they were going to look for. They found what they were going to look for. End of that statement. It's not a witch hunt when you find what you're looking for. Um, on a happier a note, uh, a proud boy got 55 months today. yippee kai freaking a <laughs> Yeah, I saw that. Wow. 50, what is that? Four years plus? Four years and another seven seven months in jail. That's yeah, that's yeah, great. yeah. And he, he would, yeah. I think he's not so proud now. Um, yeah. And as far as your, your Russian uh, grifter girl, that's easy. Yeah. Birds of a feather grift together. You know, she's not the first person that no. appears to be a ghost hanging around Mar-a-Lago. So when the FBI suggests that Trump is compromised or that Trump is a security risk, whether you believe he has documents or not, it does yeah. appear that a lot of spies or a lot of foreign nationals Well, I'm not even saying have a she's way a, of getting... Huh? I'm not even saying she's a spy. I'm just saying she's, at the very least, just another grifter. I mean, she's she's trying to go around, make the circuit, trying to pretend, you know, she's she's somebody that she's not. Whether she was really trying yeah. to get something from Trump or maybe just get a little little money or who knows what. Who knows? Who knows? 
Yeah. I'm not going to yeah. even speculate on that. But as far as you're, what you're saying, absolutely true. If somebody in there that's just pretending to be somebody they're absolutely not can get in there and, and buddy, buddy, right up right. to the present just because you got a hot lash. Well, that doesn't yeah. seem too secure. And by the way, what your what Bree said about, oh, they gave instructions on Mar-a-Lago being secure. Sure, Do- documents kept right off the pool. Yeah, in a closet off the pool. That's <laughs> regular regular freaking Fort Knox. Yeah, and that's what I and that's what I tried to ask her. Well, my question to her was in regards to them having. Them, the FBI is claiming that they that he had documents related to spies working for America overseas. And I asked her, even H- if it's declassified, why would he HSC have that documents. in the house? Huh? There's no reason to. Those are HSC yeah, documents. And there's absolutely yeah, no would, reason to. Yeah, why would that be in his house? That doesn't you know, if, if you want to look at the look at the letter from Kim Jong un or something like that, and that's a personal effect you want to keep that i get that but spies actually in the field working overseas you got that at your house and they also claim that not only did he have documents at his house but they were pl- like you mentioned the, the shed by the pool they mentioned right. that the documents were in books and, and just placed in locations that somewhere did in not his office necessarily make sense yeah yeah and, and somebody somebody comments just said democrats are afraid of trump have you lost your mind Please, please, please let Trump run. Easiest election ever. I don't. I don't disagree. Let me. I gotta. I gotta I, somewhat I, agree with that individual. I want to only, tell you this. only, I only because of the fascism part. But as far as the election, well, bring it, bring okay. it. I I do believe the Democratic Party believes that, and I've said this before myself, is that. With Biden's poll numbers, and they are getting better, but Biden, Biden, there's not a lot of enthusiasm around Biden. And I think that one of the best. He's up to 45 percent now. Yeah, but it's only. Yeah, OK. I'm not going to argue with that. But I will say this. I think that one of the best things Biden has going for himself is that they're going to send Trump back up against him. So I don't think the Democrats are afraid of running against Trump. Please. I think they're afraid of what would happen if Trump wins. Oh, no, that's true. That's true. Bring on the fascism. Yeah. And what your um, what your other guest had said as far as the um, the impeachment was a hoax. St- just stop. All you have to read is the transcript of the call. That was extortion. Period. He, he was he was the- screwing around with funds that had already been allocated by Congress, who holds the purse strings. Period. Done deal. He had he has he had no authorization to withhold those funds, and especially just to have them announce they were investigating Biden. And that's all he wanted. He just wanted them to announce it. And as far as why he had those, what you brought up, the HSC documents, before before I learned that he had actual spy-related documents, I was going to be willing to give him that. He might have taken the damn things just to feed his ego to show people. There's also the second thing where he was going to use that, them to make not him. that many of them. No, you're talking about over, no, you know, no, a no, right? Boxes? Exactly right, exactly right. When it gets to that extent, and then of such high uh, international security, no. Now, now you're talking. Well, what were you going to do with them, buddy? So mm-hmm. no. And well, as okay, far let me, as, give you, um, let me give you a like, what about this in the comments? Slime Bucket Millionaire, I like the name. Slime Bucket Millionaire says we know the FBI is crooked. Now the FBI does have some corruption in what do you, how do you view that from the Trump side saying you can't trust the FBI because they're crooked? Well, as far as uh, in, can any individual fall under that? I'm sure there has been. I mean, look at Hoover. Um but as far as an entity, no, no. And I, I actually, years years ago, did freelance work for the FBI after I got out of the service. I also had a TS uh, security clearance. Um, and th- 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 they were the most straight-laced, square guys I've ever met in my life. So, no, I, as an as a institution, no, I don't believe that. I mean, what, what's, what's, the, what's their point? What would be the point? I mean, well, the point well just, the point could be the point could be they don't like Trump and they don't want him reelected. Well, again, there's Miss Tawney is going to get Trump. Miss Tawney, the prosecutor in Georgia, she's a RICO expert. She's bringing in everybody. She's bringing in Giuliani. Uh, Mark yeah, but Meadows. do you know how many people said that this is the time?
and we were about to get Trump, and he got through. You know, how many times did Nancy Pelosi was going to do it? Mark, uh, Robert Mark, Mueller was going handsome. to do it. Mark, my words, handsome. Miss Tawny's making a name for herself. She's going to put. She's putting her. She's writing her name in the history books. I promise you. She's okay. not playing. And uh, so, out of all of these events, let me ask you this: Out of all of these events, January sixth with Liz Cheney. I forgot the name of the African American woman up in New York, but that's a civil case, if I'm correct. You're talking about another yes. African American woman down in Georgia, and then yes. you now got uh, Merrick Garland. Which one of these cases you think has the most likelihood? Well, you left one. You left one out. You left one out. Arizona. No, you left another one out. Oh I know. There's just so many. <laughs> no, the, what did I the, miss? The, there, there has been a grand. There has been a grand jury convened. Uh, targeting Trump and January 6th. That's that's done. That's what that's I said, it. Liz Cheney. I said Liz Cheney. No, 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 no. That's 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 the commission. No, I'm talking about the 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 DOJ has convened a grand ju uh, oh, grand jury. Oh, you didn't know about that. Oh yes. Oh yes, my friend. Yes, there is an investigation going on that nobody's even talking about. Yes, sir. Wow. Yes, sir. Wow. It pays to be informed. Can he possibly survive all of this shit? Hell no. If I if I took a bowl of spaghetti at you, you might be able to dodge some of them, but you ain't dodging them all. So, in other words, I'm going to get some noodles in my face. You're going to get some noodles on it. You're going to look like you got some white hair there, my friend. <laughs> wow. Yes, sir. Wow. But and, on a, does, and on a really outside, happy fun let me note. Ask you this, though. Go on. Outside of the Merrick Garland case, though, can he still run for president with those other things on him? Oh, God, no. And he, he's done. He's done. I mean, Republicans, can't, can't you find anybody else? I mean, you can find a new daddy. Get a stepdaddy. I mean, come on. <laughs> I mean, All right. seriously. Oh, All right. No, I can't go yet, though. Thanks. I can't go yet because I got something here, which is just... Just the cherry on this fucking Sunday. One point six million dollars is owed to his host for his true social. Did you know that? No. Oh no. Yes. Really? He he's fucking behind his payments for his the the host that um handles his true social. One point six wow. million dollars he owes them, and they're ready to shut it down. And that's what, not it. But what, wait, wait, but one point six million dollars is not that much money for Mac. They could raise he, that. He should be able. To, he should. Why would he get it? Let let it get behind though. Yeah, he could pay that shit off. Yeah. And also, I want you. Here's the footnote to the next thing I'm going to tell you. He's also they they were planning on taking this company public. You know that, right? Okay. No, I did not know okay. that. Okay. Well, guess what? Today, Google Play announced that True Social. Has been banned from from Google Play Store. You cannot wow. get Android and iOS customers cannot download the damn app even. Jeez. So see I if you can get, get that. With this much, even if you think Trump is the best president in U.S. history, I don't get why folks want to bring him back with this much chaos. It kind of reminds me of the guy. On the Peanuts cartoons, pig pen with all of the shit flying around him. It's like even if he's a great president, how much can you get accomplished with so much chaos and shit orbiting around you? He can't you, be the guy. Listen, if if you can, if if you got, if they can't at least think of somebody else, uh, I think the answer is give me a C, give me a U, give me an L. Give me a T. Oh my God! What's that spell? All right, I gotta go. Cult. I gotta go. Fast. Cult. Cult. See you, buddy. <laughs> All right. Good talk. Good talk. Wow. I didn't listen, and that's one of the reasons why I like talking to the folks. You know, generally MAGA, but I'm a, I'm definitely down for folks on the left as well because I like. To yeah, be we actually kid. know what we're talking about. You said what? Yeah, we actually know what we're talking about. <laughs> All right. Okay. Good talk. But that. Here's one reason why I do like talking to the folks, whether they're left or right, is because at the end of the day, it's not always about winning. I see some of you folks in the comments, you know, guest is winning or host is winning. Appreciate the input always. I'm glad to have you guys here. But it's, it, to some degree, I'm, I'm more here for the educational purposes and to hear the other side, which is why I'm always suggesting I prefer talking to MAGA because I like hearing their side as well, even though liberals are welcome. So I, I get to hear this stuff.
get to converse with you guys, hear how you feel. And at the end of the day, a lot of us get to learn something. There are there are people who write me on the side. Sometimes you're an idiot. You're ignorant. Why do you not know Biden is a racist? But then I get folks on the MAGA side also that will suggest, you know, I've been thinking about it. And Ron DeSantis is a far better choice. Or in some cases, I've decided to go independent. I get these, um, what do you call it, direct messages and things like that all the time. So that's the reason we're here. It's not that we're here to win, lose, say I know more than you or you know more than me. It's here to have an actual dialogue. But I do want to, for folks who have come in since we started, I do want you guys so to hear this guy is again. of retaining classified documents, which is a mistake that he made. He made the classic criminal defense 101 mistake of denying something before he was accused of it. So when he said on the day of the search of his home, oh, don't worry about it, I declassified everything. What is that? That's an admission that he has it. What's it? Well, he's charged with possessing NDI, whether classified or not. NDI is National Defense Information. It is criminal for anyone to possess NDI outside of a secure government facility. So the president is being accused of gathering NDI, securing NDI in his house in a way that's illegal because his house is not a government secured facility. In fact, as you may know, a Chinese spy was arrested in his house a year ago and obstructing a governmental function when twice the feds came to his home to remove the NDI and he didn't give it to them. So the former president's situation in my view, is grave. There doesn't seem to be any dispute that this material is NDI. Now, I haven't seen it. The material is also human, which stands for human intelligence. That is the most delicate NDI there is. That means that there is evidence in these documents of the foreign spies who are risking their lives to cooperate with the United States. Now, once president again, as I said, that is Judge Napolitano from Fox News. So that's not a CNN or, or liberal guy talking to you. That's Judge Napolitano, long-term uh, commentator at Fox News, a former judge. Now, I had a caller on here that suggested the documents were not NDI and things like that. She was reading the affidavit and saying that she was able to interpret something totally different than what that former judge is saying and what a lot of other legal analysts are saying. So I just wanted to play that for you because that is not a left wing source that's stating that Trump's situation is dire. OK, we're going to Philip Anderson in the box. Um well, what do you think? I mean, you think that the FBI is just simply making this all up? That's what I'm hearing from my MAGA folks. So um, looking in the comments, come on, this guy is delusional. Who, though? The entire FBI, the judge that signed off on a warrant, they're all delusional? They don't know anything? If Trump truly did declassify the documents, let's give him the benefit of the doubt. He says he declassified the documents. Shouldn't there be a paper trail of that, a digital record of that? You know, the documents should be stamped, declassified, or something of that nature. Can you take classified documents as a president, have them at your home, and anytime you're questioned on them, say, oh, I declassified those. Do you not have to have any record that the documents were declassified? Because that's what we're looking at here. If the documents were indeed declassified, as he is suggesting, some type of evidence to show that? That's what we're looking for. Tim Robbins, good evening. Hey, Handsome, how's it going? It's going good. Are we make? is the FBI just making this stuff up on President Trump? Well, first, uh, the FBI is just the messenger, right? We're, these are the people that are only ones authorized to go and, and, and do this search warrant. They're just the messenger. The DOJ is who we're talking about, right? This is In this case, okay. we can't blame the FBI. They're just doing their job, their statutory duty. The FBI is the one's going to commit the good raid. Point. It's gonna... Good point. You're the first I've heard say that. Really good point. They're just doing their job. Yeah, they're just doing their job. They they were sent there by the judge. That was uh, the, and it's the DOJ that sent them there, right? Right. So, um, secondly, when I first heard this, I'm kind of like you, handsome. I I don't trust anybody any, anymore, just because you know I I stopped trusting everybody after the whole weapons of mass destruction 9/11 stuff. So I stopped making knee-jerk assumptions and just started reading about it myself. And it turns out 
the president does have power to declassify things at at his will, at his whim. Like he can literally directly a quote from the director of, of NARA said, if the president put all the documents in the back of his U-Haul an hour before he left and pulled out of the White House and waved his hand over the U-Haul and said, all this is declassified, that's all he needs to do. It's upon NARA to document that. So a, a lot of this, Trump's a jerk. There's no doubt about it, right? He's a pure, <laughs> like he's the poster child narcissist. But sometimes when he's right, he's right. And 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 this in this case, I think he jumped at the gun because he knows he does have all his ducks in a row, right? If Nara dragged their feet, that's one thing. He did send the fifteen boxes over. They apparently were nervous because of some of the 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 documents that are labeled classified, not necessarily are classified, were mixed with a bunch of other documents. Okay, so then wait, Nara wait, has wait. to go. Yeah. Okay, the question I have, if if the FBI or DOJ is correct in saying that he has information that relates to foreign operatives in the field, why would he take that home? What is the purpose of having that in your crib? Well, it's you know, first, right, you're right, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but first, it's an allegation, right? There's an assumption, yeah. right? Well, he's not denying so it, searching. So he's not denying right. he didn't have it. He's saying it's declassified. He's not denying well, some, it. Well, I mean... And 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 again, I, I my defense is coming from as a citizen. I'm not treating Trump as a president. I'm treating him as if it was in my shoes. If I knew I was right, I would let it settle itself in the public square, right? I mean, yeah. let why talk? Anytime you talk bad about something, this is the kind of the thing that I get irritated with my fellow Republican conservatives and Democrats. Is the moment you start catcalling somebody else, you're instantly the enemy. Let people fall on their own face. Let people people want to tell you who you who they are if you'll just let them talk, right? Right. So, so I think um, it's all. It really is the biggest thing. All this um, document stuff is really not the red herring. I think the red herring is is the obstruction. That's if they get okay. him on anything, it'll be obstruction. With that. Well, that and the, that and the potential espionage. But here's here's another question I would ask you, and you tell me what you think. If the documents were declassified when they yeah. were trying to get the documents from Trump, the what is it, Smithsonian or whoever they whoever they said they were trying to get the documents from Trump, the National Archives, why wouldn't he say no? They're declassified in their mind. I mean, well, to the point where his they lawyer had to did do that. Yeah, well, the lawyer then, actually did that, and she certified that there was no classified documents at Mar-a-Lago, and, and the government even came and had him, at their behest, put an extra lock on the sword. So it's like espionage is the gathering of documents, not necessarily disseminating them, but under the Espionage Act, gathering uh, documents uh, okay, could so also... Okay, so if he told, if he actually told them I don't have any more documents at my house, which is what they're alleging. They're alleging right. that he told him that he told them they or his lawyer told the DOJ that he did not have any documents at his house. And then when they performed the warrant, he did have documents at his house. That should be pretty easy to clarify, right? Well, it is because the only people that know, even FBI agents don't know, right? Because this is why the warrant was so open ended. It basically said. If you see anything that says top secret, they're not going to know if it's top secret or not. There's thousands of pages, right? They don't have the ability to know if some, all they see is in a manila folder, it has stamped top secret or compartmentalized. It doesn't mean that it's actually still declassified. There's no law that says it has to be erased. I'm still, I'm hearing this. And it, I mean, just like I'm sure you, maybe yourself and folks listening, this stuff kind of gives you a headache, but it leads to the same question I have to ask over and over again. Sure. What is the purpose of taking all this shit home? Why do you have well, all this in your own house? If I was Trump, right, one, he has a statutory right to personal copies um, of any documents that he wants to take with him as like presidential memos, all the notes. Why do you, why do you have. Who does that? I mean, you're talking a couple dozen boxes 
of what they're debating back and forth, classified versus declassified, top secret versus de who? Why do you take that much shit home? It it just I don't. It seems suspect that well, you would take this it, much stuff home with you. It's probably it's probably suspect be me and you, handsome, because we're not that level of narcissist. Okay, I mean we have to yeah. understand who we're dealing with. This is a guy that totes his, his own, you know, nobody has to tell Trump he's great. He tells himself every morning. So he was he managed somehow to become the president of the United States. You think that guy isn't going to take stuff with him to go and, and he probably, who knows what he does with those documents? I don't even want to suspect, but you know, he does I, have a statutory I, right truly, to them. Yeah, but if he truly has information about foreign spies operating over, even if he declassified it, why would you have that at your house? I, where you're I don't hosting know. guests, where you're hosting foreign nationals and you're hosting guests at your house, even if the FBI had you add an additional lock, you have folks that are in those countries that leave those nations at your house where you're keeping paperwork about U.S. spies in their country. Can can anybody not see how dangerous that could be? No, absolutely. And you remember uh, President Bush almost got in trouble for that. He, he almost yeah. got in trouble with that because of, uh, I don't know, the guy that was actually working for Trump. He, he somebody, somebody in his administration leaked Bolton's wife's identity. Remember that? Yes. Yes, I do yeah. remember so, that. So, so, Ambassador you know, Bolton, yeah, who, they, so that, who they just, the Iranians just tried to kill him a couple weeks ago. Yeah. That was a big yeah. deal. So, um, they, it's a big deal. And here's my other part is, look. As the government protecting secrets, I'm okay with the government being a little over paranoid about anybody having any kind of documents. I say, let's be safe, then sorry. And if you got nothing to hide, then don't be pissed, you know? Um, so at the end of the day, do you think what Trump I think did, it could have been done a little more professional. Yeah, so at the end of the day, do you think what Trump did is essentially harmless to the country? What's that now? I'm sorry. I said, so at the end of the day, do you think what Trump what did is saying, essentially, is it, okay, you got a lot going, can you hear me? I think, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, do you think what, I what think, uh, Trump, him, do you think, do you think what he did was essentially harmless to the country? If, if he's actually guilty of what uh, they accuse him of, absolutely, it's harmful, but it's also harmful in the fact that no, I said nothing harm he does I said is harm for the less. best. Oh, no, no. Nothing Trump does is harmless to this country. It's done nothing but divide us. I mean, I can agree with his policies, handsome, but nobody's going to tell me that Trump is the great uniter. And if you're not going to be a uniter of all the American people, good or bad, I, I don't have any time for you whatsoever. Zero. And that's just coming from uh, that's just coming from an American, man. I don't care who you are. If you stand up and say that if any anybody this 2024 or any politician stands up and starts doing that cat calling that I'm talking about, they're not going to get my vote. Because first and foremost, man, we got to keep this country together, man. At the end of the day, the big picture, this all this divisiveness is going to tear us apart, man. And I'm a fear what we might become after that. It is not going to be the social utopia that the youngsters think it will be. That's never happened in history. We'll all become slaves. Of whatever well, comes me, out of this country. Give me, give me an example, because why is the F kid in the comments is stating that Trump did not divide America? So just for shits and giggles, when you say Trump was divisive, give me an example. I mean, he listened the way he said and talked to people. I mean, his actions were different than his voice, but his voice was booming, right? He did nothing but divide people. You, you can't just unite a party that's already united. That's nothing. That's easy. I can do that all day. But when I want to go talk to somebody that is an absolute opposite of me, and we can have common ground, that's not what Trump does. He stands at the podium and screams at the top of the lungs, Democrats are bad, liberals are bad, everybody's crazy, everybody's against me, everybody wants me. It's just... It gets old, man. It, it was entertaining for about like six months, and then after that, it, it's just got old. Well, but what about what about Carolyn in the comments? Carolyn Poppy says 
he was opening eyes. He was letting people know what was going on. Yeah, but but not from a biased standpoint. Not like from a Ronald Reagan standpoint. Not from an Obama standpoint. He was letting people know what was going on from his perspective. Fair point. All right. All right, Jim. I got to move it on. Good talk, man. Anytime I'm on, feel man. free to come on back. Hey. All right. Have a good yeah. night. Have a good yeah. night. Anytime. Yeah, come back and holler at you, boy. Uh, he opened eyes to how, what it does say, how crazy his party was. Spooky Don. Um, did Trump open eyes to how crazy his party was? I kind of disagree. I believe that President Trump essentially changed the Republican Party and redirected them. Now, folks point out how bad they believe President Bush was with the weapons of mass destruction or Liz Cheney as a rhino or John McCain was, you know, corrupt, whatever you want to say. Before Trump came along, those were all Republican heroes. So I believe that President Trump actually came in there and literally changed the direction what the Republican Party stood for. Because now, as it stands right now, every single Republican president or presidential nominee in our lifetime that is still alive, MAGA does not like them. John McCain was a nominee in, what, 2008? Mitt Romney was a nominee in 2012. George Bush served from 2000 to 2008. You know, you guys don't like any of those folks. And those were the top members of your party including now Dick Cheney is isolated. You don't like him. You don't like his daughter. All of the top members of the Republican Party are no longer liked by the Republican Party. Democrats and liberals have nothing to do with that. These folks are not liberals. They're not Democrats. And they're certainly not rhinos. They are people who ran afoul of Trump. And because we now, meaning MAGA, the MAGA party now sides with Trump, anybody that runs afoul of Trump is no longer a Republican. It's just a different type of mindset. Uh, going to Jim Lou two one in the comments. Hey, tap the screen, get your book 25,000 25, likes. Y'all can make that shit happen. Jim Lou, good evening. What's up, my brother? What's good, man? Look, I'm in the trenches, listen. man. Are they making all this shit up on this guy? Are they just making all this stuff up? Look, at the end of the day, look, brother, this is my backup page. I'm kind of censored on my main page here, but I want to say something. There's a lot of things that some of your previous callers or some of your previous people, I'm really never in the box, you know, cause I have people come in my box, but uh, in regards to the trust issues with the DOJ FBI, we're going to have some real talk fam. We're going to have some real Let's talk. Do it. Okay. Let's go with that. The FBI, the FBI, you were sitting here saying, why would Trump, be not handing over the paperwork, documents, whatever that he had at his house. One, it ain't none of your concern what he has at his house. He do, he has what he has at his house the same way you have what you have at your house. Whoa, 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 I know what you're going to do. I know, Go I know what you're going to do. I know what you're going to yeah. do. Okay? So with that being said, if Trump done not hand over certain things to the FBI, this is the same FBI who set his ass up with Russia collusion with the P-tape and all this other guy. I don't care how you want to go paint that shit. It's already coming out. The same way that this other gentleman that just barely got escorted out the FBI for having whatever biasness toward Trump. Let's call a spade a spade, fam. We have to call a spade a spade. Okay? The same okay, way we have police here. brutality. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me respond. Go ahead. Let me respond. First of all, one of the things I will often say when folks say that uh, there was a witch hunt, Russian collusion delusion and things like that, if you want to look at it that way, then you would have to say it was all a witch hunt on Hillary Clinton as well. Nothing came out of that I, either. I didn't. I I didn't say it was a witch hunt. What I said was the. You, but you get what I'm saying. I I get what you're saying, but don't take me down that way because that's not what I said. I said what okay. I'm talking about is a trust issue. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not going to sit here and trust the FBI who already set me up with two other things, who set me up with the impeachment, who set me up with the phone call with Zelensky because they were hearing in on a conversation they weren't supposed to be hearing. Out. Let's call a spade a spade, fam. Well, let's, let's call a spade that. a spade. Let's you wouldn't that. like it if it happened to you. Okay. You wouldn't okay. like it if and it didn't I happen also, to you. And I, I agree I wouldn't like it if it happened to me, but if you want to call a spade a spade and say who can't be trusted, how many MAGA 
serving time in jail for January 6th or blaming Trump for setting them up in regards okay. to the election. All, and they're not, they're not I'm, saying it's not true. I'm with you on this. But let me first first get this out the way. Fuck the Democrat Party. Fuck the Republican Party. Fuck the Independent Party. Fuck conservative movement. Fuck the liberal movement. <laughs> fuck Trump. Fuck Biden. Fuck them all. And I'm going to tell you why. Because all of these people, while they sit here and argue on TV, they go break bread together, bro. And you and I are paying for that bread. No. That's no, facts on I don't facts. Believe, I don't believe Trump is breaking bread with anybody that's on TV. I don't believe that. Then, then, okay, you're right. So let me ask you this real quick. Because I serve my country. I serve my country for the Constitution, not for a political party, not for a group of people, not for gender, not for sexuality. It was for the Constitution. I don't care if the people turn around and say, arrest Trump because we're going to pass law. If that's what the people do and vote on, legislation's passed. That's what I serve my country for. So did that you serve said, your country? So, so when they said when the people stated that he lost the election, did you agree with what the people had to say? Yeah, I, I, okay. you guys, you guys assume that just because you see a red hat with finger Joe Biden on it, that I am all full blown Trump. No, we need to get out of that stereotype mindset. The same way certain people in my hood don't like to be stereotyped. We need to stop doing that shit to other people. I bring real talk. So man. you accept you accept that so you accept that he did lose the 2020 election. What did I just say? I, I'm just trying to get clarity. Just trying to get clarity. Yeah. What okay. that whole moving moving from, from November the, the 10th to the 16th to December 1st, December 6th. I never bought into any of that. You want to know why? Because whenever I move forward, fam. I focus on the wrench shield of my vehicle, not the rear view mirror. Okay. I want to so know, I want to make sure that when we move in forward, that we have our elections that are free and fair elections. I'm just going to say, I'm just going to say straight up. We know that there's people that are voting more than once. We know it. It's And it's been happening prior to 2020. Yeah. It happened yeah. in 2016. Like I call a spade a spade, man. I, I'm not, you know, I don't give a shit about all that. I don't care. Okay. It's been happening, so, but we have to reel fine. it in, though. Okay, that's fine to suggest that there is fraud in terms of our elections. There's 300 and some million people in this country. You're never mm -hmm. going to have an election that's 100% mm -hmm. honest. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that the president gets on television the night while the votes are still being counted and yell out, I won by a landslide. He didn't have any proof of that at all. And he's still saying then that. Why, why is did, he saying but did you carry? But did you carry the same energy when Clinton said the same shit in 2016? I didn't hear Hillary Clinton say she won by a landslide. Oh, you don't remember the whole, how many days did it take her to concede? Yeah, but she no, didn't no, say no. she See, won we, by a landslide. We, 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 for, we forget about all that. We forget no, about because, all, all that. No, wait a minute. Because wait, at no. the end of the day, that's I, not, that's not because true. here's that's the not thing. True. I, Whenever I voted no, for wait, Obama, that, I voted, I voted that twice for true. Obama. That is not true. Al Gore took oh. time to say he conceded as well, but he didn't say he won by a landslide. Okay. Hillary Clinton didn't say that. Okay. Okay. So, so I don't care who won by a landslide. I don't care. The mere fact that you question it at some point, it doesn't matter how high or how little. The mere fact that you're questioning that you're admitting that you know that there is fraud that's happening in our country. I, I'm not I'm not even here for that. Therefore, yeah. I, I know it's going to happen. You know, no, okay. like not everything's going to be 100 percent. Like, I understand all that. that, ain't, I, that I get all the that. point I'm trying to make. That's not the point I'm trying to make. The point I'm I know what point you're trying to make. And let me say it again for folks. Let me say it again for folks. Let me say it again for other folks in the audience who may not know what I'm trying to make. The point I've stated mm -hmm. before, even after watching 2,000 Mules a half a dozen times, is there's no way in a country with as many million, tens of millions of people as we have in this country, you will never have an election that is 100% fair, no matter what the hell you do. Because if you make the IDs and everything else perfect, then the people who collect the ballots mm -hmm. will cheat. The point I'm trying to make is that there's a difference okay. between fraud in suggesting that the Republicans won the election. Trump did not allege okay. there was fraud in the election. He alleged he won, and he does not have any proof of that. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I'm with you. That's why I said I don't focus on the rearview mirror. I focus okay. on the windshield moving forward. But at the end of the day, we still need to call a spade a spade, fam.
I don't really give a shit about what happened in 2016 election. I don't care about it. I don't care what happened in 2020 election. You want to know why? Because I live by the southern border here in Texas. We have in our own okay. Democrat communities, we have our own Democrat communities ran by people that ain't even from this country, fam. Okay. I don't care about 2020 election. Can we focus on something but, but moving that's you, forward? Though. But that's but that's you though. There that's are your brothers and sisters. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're saying you don't care about January 6th and things like that. People lost family members. Ashley Babbitt oh. died on that day. They they uh, died Albert, fighting yeah. for something. Wait a minute. They died according to you even. Yeah. They died on January yeah. 6th fighting for something that even you admit was not true. Well, I didn't say January 6th wasn't true. No, no, I the election. I, I saw what you the guys election. saw. No. I saw what you guys saw. But at the end of the day, I don't care about that right now. We have our own brothers and sisters in America right now living in communities that are being overran from people that aren't even from this country, fam. They're having cattle slaughtered. They're having their animals fucking slaughtered. They're being broken in. If you don't want to know about it, that's on you. I don't care about the January 6th bullshit because I can't do anything to change it. You can hold people accountable. Yeah, that's fine. But our government can't walk and chew gum. Yeah, you can do something to change it. Yeah, you can do something to change it. Because you, you got to understand, I don't live anywhere near where cattle are being slaughtered. So I, just like you don't care about January 6th, that's not a big concern with me. I live in the northern, the northern area of the Midwest. There's no cattle around me unless I go to the supermarket where they're, where they're being neatly packaged up for my purchase. But I will tell you this, in regards to January 6th, I care so about care. it because there is there is a possibility that it could happen again in the future. People who were pissed mm -hmm. about what they thought was wrong on January 6th are still mm -hmm. pissed about that and still threatening to mm -hmm. take action. So I'm, I'm not in the position where you are, no, but I'm ready to just no, wrap I'm, I'm up with January 6th. I don't agree. Yeah, I don't agree with any of that that happened on January 6th. And to be honest with you, this may be a surprise to you. I never watched 2000 Mules or 2K Mules or whatever that shit is. I never watch. I don't like I said, I don't really focus on that. Now, whoever did anything wrong, I don't give a damn who it is. Trump having documents at his house and it be legal, illegal, whatever. If he did anything wrong, breaking the law, his ass needs to go to jail because I'm a firm believer <laughs> in equality. I'm from the hood. You feel All me? Right. I've been profiled. I've been accused of doing shit that I ain't ever fucking done. But at the same time, I'm going to hold that same standard across the board. And this is probably one of the biggest reasons our government loves this division. Because as long as this division between you and I and people, well, we don't have any disagreement, you know, like we having a chat. But people that continue to fight left and right, one another down here, our government loves that. Because they're distracted while our government officials still get paid. They're focusing on January 6th when we got this inflation shit going on right now, bro. Like, All right. there's people losing their homes. Well, you got to understand the unique nature of... There's always been people losing their homes. We have inflation and... Roll we have ups and downs with inflation depending on who's in office. January 6th has never happened before. There's a reason why they're focusing on it. That has never happened before. They don't want it to happen again. So they're not so easy so or quick to move on from there. So what? what's taking so long? So what's taking that? People like you and I, they have us locked up a fucking sap. What's taking them so long? The nature a of Democrat those who are, committee the with two Republicans trying to charge. What's taking so long is the nature of who it, they're trying to charge with it. No, it, this is something because I used to be in the military and I know how intel works. This is shit they already got planned out and our people keep falling for it, fam. We keep falling okay. for the fucking hook on the bait. We keep falling for the hook on the bait. At the end of the day, they already know what he had at at Mar-a-Lago. They already knew it. They were already well, there. If it was such a violation, why did they tell his ass to put an extra lock? He did what he did at their request, and they still took a long-ass time to go pick up what whatever documents. Get. Here's what I don't get. If you don't trust the FBI or believe anything that comes from them, why do you believe that they told them to put an extra lock on the door? How do you know that's not a lie? I'm just asking. I'm pointing out that the may not be true. Okay, do that, you trust the FBI? It may not be true. Maybe they didn't tell them to put a do lock you, on the door. Maybe that's something that's just a lie. That may have never happened. Do you, do you trust the FBI, sir? You know, just like with the police department, 
there are I'm a, I'm gonna use the same thing that's often thrown at mm -hmm. me. There's a few bad apples in every in every environment. Do I believe every single FBI agent out there is lying? No, 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 I don't. Do I believe the entire DOJ is just all making this stuff up? No, I don't. I don't believe everybody is like that. Right. No, and I'm with you. I'm with you because I don't believe all police officers are bad. I know we got some bad ones. I know we do. I know that there's some bad players in the DOJ. I mean, look at Peter Stroke and Lisa Page. I mean, they had a motive, bro. At the end of the day, yeah. if they the ones in charge of doing certain things over Trump's profile, I mean, at the end of the day, let's go. Let's call a spade a spade. You know you uphill and you got the stack against you. Anybody can well, I think anybody could be, if you want to really view anybody, you could you could come up with anybody having a motive for something. I mean, Trump attacked you. It really, Trump is someone that has attacked so many people. You ever heard of some, you? You from this, being from the hood, at being from the hood, as you say, I'm from the South Side of Chicago. There are certain people out there that are involved in so much dirt that if if a hit was placed on them, you would not know who committed the hit because they got so many enemies. Trump is that type of person. Everybody has a motive to go after him because he spent his entire presidency going after everybody. So when you say that somebody is compromised or somebody has a motive to go after him, yeah, he made enemies everywhere he went. I got to move it on, mm -hmm. though, man. What? Yeah, I, I would. I would I'll give you the last word. Very much longer either. But okay. check this out. Just like you said that the FBI can find a reason. That's not the purpose of the FBI. That's no, not the not. purpose. We have allowed them. We have allowed them to gain this power and control and manipulate our citizens. They work for us. We don't work for them. We need to remember that as a community. At the end of the day, we need to remember that, man. When they mess up, we need to hold them accountable. That's just that's just real talk. At the end of the day, we we listen. They started out. By spying on Martin Luther King, why the hell all of a sudden they go after Trump and everybody like we got a whole FBI account? And all the, and, and, and all of, I wasn't alive when FBI when when Mark, when MLK was 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 killed, man. I wasn't alive, but I've carried the they same energy across they, the they board. Were corrupt. But they now were the corrupt. FBI is trustworthy. The FBI wasn't trustworthy when they took down MLK, but now they're trustworthy because they're taking down Trump. Like, make it make well, sense. Quit having double standards, fam. Damn right, and that's my point. Is that I'm the point I'm making is that the Trumpsters sound like a hell of a lot like Black Lives Matter. What, They're trying to get us. You just accused us process. of doing is exactly what you're guilty of, sir. What you just okay. accused MAGA of doing is exactly what you're guilty of. It's called projection. Everything y'all accuse Trump of doing and being. Starting World War Three, crashing the economy, creating all this inflation, our what southern border, Carver? all these things. Carver? Look at what happened under Biden. What about karma? You got a hell of a lot of Black Lives Matter people suggesting that the police is corrupt and Trumpsters are waving mm -hmm. around Blue Lives Matter flags and things like that. And now all of a sudden the, the law enforcement comes after them and they want to point out, well, you know, law enforcement is corrupt now. Maybe if you had to listen to Black Lives Matter, you wouldn't be dealing with this shit. And here y'all are praising the FBI. Yeah, I'm okay. carrying the same standard across the board. <laughs> I've All carried right. the same standard across the board. That's you. That ain't MAGA. You're profiling the same way you don't like to be okay. profiled, sir. All right. And vice versa. I got to go, Jim. Catch you later. <laughs> I'm man. just calling it out for what it is, bro. Don't get mad at me. All right. Stay Good solid, job. bro. I'll be keeping you in my prayers, man. Stay solid. Uh, please do. Looking at the comments. That is MAGA. No, he's right. Look at the comments here. Uh, not now, but these auctions. What did it say? Oh, damn. These auctions. Who's messing us all up? I don't get that one. Um, really, how about those cops on Capitol Hill? They got hit, spit, and killed MAGA back to blue. You know, crazy thing is there's there's looks like video of them actually beating police with Blue Lives Matter flags. Maybe I didn't see that. But it looked like I did. Let me go to the box. I don't want to blow VA too long. Ultra Megatron. It doesn't say Megatron from the old Transformers cartoons. We all grew up and loved them kids. Megatron. What's up? Talk to me. Good evening. Uh, so, so I'm not like the last guy. Um, <laughs> I, I used to be. I used to be a Democrat in uh, 2018. Okay. Uh, I, I don't see us unifying together. 
Um, why not? Why not? What's stopping it? Well, let let let's keep a let's keep a let, let's let's keep a small track of what's been going on, right? So, sure. uh, we've had been told that we should go to re-education camps. We should have our kids taken away from us. If we didn't take the vax, we should die. Everybody who's part of the quote unquote MAGA cult should be unalived. Uh, me being a, a vet, Wait a I should minute. be one to 22, Wait a 22, 22 a day. I mean, a like everybody why, why who is part of the MAGA. Wait a minute, everybody who is part of the MAGA cult should be unalived. Who said something like that of any significance in this country? Nobody of significance. But no. it is. I mean, do you it, want me it, quoting? It is, it is a staple. Okay, with wait, a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You do you want me giving you every Proud Boys quote that's out there? I mean, because that's what you're doing on the left. I mean, when you're talking about with nobody else significant, you you realize how many anti left Hillary Clinton drinking the blood of infants and shit like that. I mean, if you want to bring out the crazies, we could easily do that. Go ahead, continue. See, see, but see, that's one thing though, right? We can point out one person and say something to them. Right. About something we don't like about that person. Whereas on the left, it's if you don't agree with me, you're either a fascist, a racist, a white supremacist, or you hate your own kind. You being a POC, uh, you're a traitor to the country, you know, all this other stuff It's, it's a blanket statement for everybody. It, it, it's not the same as us saying we don't like this person because blah, blah, blah. Right. We can no. point out and say, yeah. Hillary Clinton did this Everybody. Or, or Bill Clinton did this. OK, I get your point that if 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 the left disagrees with you, sometimes they throw around the word racist. I, I've said that on my program. Well, if you if you if you are debating with the left, particularly if you're white, eventually somebody's going to call you a racist. But you make it sound like the Republican Party don't do the same shit. If you are a left winger debating with the right wingers, eventually somebody's going to call you a socialist, a libtard, a fascist. You guys throw around words all the time. Look what you're doing in your own party. Half of them now are considered rhinos because they didn't agree with Trump. So I agree that the liberals do name calling, but that's not something that's unique to liberals. You guys do no, that. No. Here's the thing I, I find confusing, right? Like the same people we've called rhinos from the get go are the exact same people that was hated by the left. I mean, Dick Cheney, of all people. And all of a sudden, like, okay. Liz Cheney's a hero. Like, come on now. Like, how, how much stuff did everybody talk about Bush during the time? And, and I, I ain't gonna lie, Bush was a POS. Everybody can agree to that, right? But it, it's not the same thing when it comes to somebody who was hated back then, now all of a sudden they're a hero because they're going after Trump, right? And and just just for the record, I'm, I'm not even a full Trump dude. Right. Like if he runs again, I'm a vote for him because I'm, I'm going to vote red regardless. Like this blue okay. shit ain't working. Right. So I, I'm going to vote for whoever's on the ticket. Right. Even if it's not Trump, I'm going to vote for whoever's red because I'm, I'm sick of this blue BS. Right. Okay. That's fine. So, you, you have that right. Now, in regards to what you're talking about, us liking Liz Cheney, you guys like Joe Manchin when he goes against Biden. Look at Tulsi Gabbard. She's a liberal all over right wing media. You guys do the exact same thing. If you can find a liberal that speaks against liberals, you guys love them just like Democrats are all of a sudden loving Liz Cheney. All you need no, see, see, African, there's, 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 there's go, a ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Right? No, there, there's, there's a difference, right? So for like Joe Manchin, right? We acknowledge when he does stuff because he has aligned with some of our views. He doesn't always align with our views. He all he sometimes really? votes against our interests, but we but we still don't attack the dude, right? Okay. So like this changing. last thing that he that, this last thing that he voted on, um, definitely wasn't something that we like. But we we're not going out talk about something, you know, like uh, let let's go ahead and swat Joe Manchin's house, right? Three times. Whereas like you know, uh, Tulsi Gabbard. Tulsi Gabbard, she's I think she's more to the right than she is to the left. Right. And like I, I check her too. like her voting history on certain stuff like she's more in line with what we agree with than it, it would be for the left. And I think that she probably would do that if given the opportunity, just like Joe Manchin threatened that he would actually switch parties if the if the left kept attacking him. Okay, here's what here's what I don't get though. You're talking about name calling and attacking, but Trump was like known for that. You you're pointing to liberals name calling and calling people all kinds of races and things like that. Pocahontas? Really? 
You're, I mean, you don't see that coming from the head of your own party? Okay, so Trump is not the head of the Republican Party, right? So you who have is? Trumpism. Who is? And you have, you have, who is hold this? on. Who is the head hold of the up. Republican so, Party right now? And nobody's the head of the Republican Party right now. That's not right? true. So you, so, no, you do. So you have you have MAGA and then you have Trumpism, right? And you have people who follow Trumpism. Trumpism and MAGA are not the same thing. Right. So you're MAGA telling me, That's you're, a telling me the, movement. you're telling me the Republican Party, the Republican Party currently has no leader. That's what you're telling me. No, we're looking to Trump as a leader because he's the one that's the most uh, competitive against everybody else that they throw on out. Is Trump so the if, leader if, if, of the Republican if, if, Party right now? Look at this. If we actually got somebody like, say, for example, Ron DeSantis to run, do you not think that Ron DeSantis would automatically become the head of the Republican Party? No, no, I do not. I think if if Trump did not give Ron DeSantis the AOK, Ron DeSantis would not do very well. I, I don't know. Ron's doing pretty good right now. So okay. the only reason why he's not even deciding to run yet is if Trump runs. So if Trump runs, he's not going to do it because they can't split the ticket. And they're both from Florida. So, so in other words, he's out, already you know, doing. He's, in other words, he's already doing exactly what I just stated. Is that he is even though. Even though Ron DeSantis is a respected politician in his own right, he is giving Trump the podium. If you don't run, then I'll run. But he is essentially sitting back and waiting to see what Trump will do. You're kind of saying what I just said. I don't get how you don't see Trump as a leader of the Republican Party. I don't get that. No. I, you have so many people who have been endorsed by Trump, like Carrie Lake, for example, that's absolutely killing it in Arizona. Right. Uh, head of the primary, okay. she's already up four points ahead of uh, who, who was that? Who was that um, one racist lady? I forgot what her name is. Um, <laughs> but so you, you have DeSantis who has implemented a lot of common sense stuff. Right. And he mm -hmm. has also been endorsed by by Trump. So, of course, he's not going to backstab the dude who's pretty much helped him get to where he's at. That That would be like something. That you know, like the Dems did to Adam Kinzinger, right? That that's pretty okay. much what happened to him. So, the 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 thing I don't understand is like, if I was to say I would support this person automatically, the very first thing that's going to come out the left's mouth is he's a fascist, he's a racist, or something, just simply because he's Republican, right? Okay. Whereas if it was somebody who the left puts out. And we're going to say, hey, this person's policies are absolutely, you know, batshit no, crazy. No, no. Policies, every, single, every single Democrat that has ran in the last 10 years has been called a socialist. Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, those people ain't socialists. So when you point out that the Democrats call everybody a racist or whatever, you don't see the Republicans doing the same thing with the socialist word. You're not seeing that at all, huh? Again, it's retaliatory. Like I would be pissed off if we get called names and we don't say something back. Okay. Like that—that that right. would be just that would just be a, a sign of weakness to me. Like if, if y'all gonna go out of y'all way to propose such crazy shit, like put them in re-education camps, take their kids away from them and shit like that, and we don't say something back, like I would leave. Like, so do you not? Word, uh, like, so would you not agree words, with that? So in other words, you're res you're responding to name calling and wrong behavior with name calling and wrong behavior. I, I don't I don't see I don't see an issue with it. I don't see an issue with it because then why bring it I'm, up? I'm then honestly why sick and tired because I'm I'm sick and tired of being the bigger person, right? Oh, everybody tip your hats, be respectful. <laughs> like when when have we gotten that sort of uh, that same shit in return? Like be when realistic, like semi fascists Really? Give me the like, era. It took them six me... months to come up with Alton Mag, which is supposed to be insulting to people, and now they're coming up with semi fascists now. That they're not even when talking is... about people who just support like, just everybody in the Republican you Party is semi fascist. You, you, you said you're sick and tired of being the bigger person. How far back are you going? I'm going back since like what, 2013? I'll go back to 2013. How how many years okay. is that? That would be nine years. You think the Republican Party was being the bigger person back in 2013? Yeah, why not? Okay. All right. I'll leave it at that. Okay. I, I, there's a lot of folks who might agree with you. I see folks in the audience that clearly disagree with you. I'll leave it at that. But listen, man, I got to move it on, Ultra.
Well, hold on. Be- before you go, I, I just I just want to say sure. like no no matter how much we want unity, it's not gonna happen, right? No, like no c- civil war is like a very very like last resort but it doesn't seem like out of the realm of possibility right like we are just like thinking that there was no possible way that we would actually have people showing up at our door telling us like we're terrorist extremists for showing up at pta meetings but we've had that happen like anything that was out of the realm of possibility is now a possible reality And there's absolutely no way, like, even if we had a president who would try to unite both sides, I wouldn't want unity with the same people who wish death upon me for the last five years, period. Okay. And and like I said, okay, and I I don't know where to go with that because you admitted in the beginning of our conversation that no liberal of significant power has done that. You're running with, I guess, folks in the with Me Too movement and folk, you know, just regular citizens yelling out crazy shit. And you're pinning that on the entire liberal party. I, I don't know where to go with that. I mean, I'm not going to pin the Proud Boys on every Republican. They say some wild stuff, too. So I don't know where to go with that. But appreciate you coming through, Ultra. All right. All right. Okay. Box. Uh, cut I'm not going to cut the man off. Listen. The motto here is let that man speak, let that woman speak. I do not ban or block anyone. That's the way this program has been ran since I began talking with the folks. I didn't expect for a guy with a name like mine to enjoy talking with MAGA and not get a few strong, passionate opinions. Kind of like what that's kind of one of the reasons why I like speaking to MAGA is because they bring the passion, they state their points. I don't have to agree, they don't have to agree with me. But at the end of the day, when you come on here, you're going to get to speak. Only only way you get banned here is if the social media account decides to do it. Yours truly. If you look at my pictures, by the way, if you go to my profile this for this page right here, you go to my profile, all of my videos, the very first one, top left corner, the very first one is a video of doing what we're doing right now, a caller, MAGA, calling in and cussing me the hell out. I let the people speak. You don't get banned here, folks. All right, going back to the box. Uh, Fast Pass. Fast Pass been waiting on. Uh, moving on. Hey, man. Uh, good evening there, sir. What's on your mind this afternoon? It's me, me man. That was, a, that was a long wait. <laughs> I appreciate you holding, man. There's a lot of folks coming through pretty hard. They, they got me in the trenches this evening. What's on your mind, though? Oh, well, your previous college one. I mean, yeah. I mean, if you keep on an eye for an eye, it's going to be a world of blind people. Um, you know, yeah, I was going to say that because yeah. um, he was talking about a civil war and all of that, and and, there, and, and we're not going to have unity. And I, and I was going to say that. exactly what you said. Yeah, we can't you, you have just that. admitted it. Yeah, he just admitted that, well, we're tired of being a bigger person. Well, then you're tired of pursuing unity. I mean, you just well, admitted, another, well, I'm going to start doing all this stuff, too. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Another critique is saying that, you know, Trump's not the leader of the party because, yeah, I mean, you know, right now it's Trump's party. <laughs> Face it, it right. is. Um, and um, I agree with him on a couple things, but on, on a lot of things, he's a little cringy about a couple things, but. You know, you were doing so good <laughs> with reasonable callers. Um, I did want to, you know, facts. I want to call out facts matter because, you know, I mean, the guy's a legend in his own mind. And he said to me one time, I was glad I'm following him this time and him, not me, because last time he said, oh, that previous guy, he, he's, a, he's a virtual quote of everything that Fox says. And you asked him, well, what exactly does Fox say? Set, did he did he quote Fox and he couldn't answer? Remember yeah. that? Okay. I don't know if you remember. He I, could not answer. I, I, I kind of remember. I kind of. I remember. read a lot of things. I read Mother Jones, man. I read a lot of different things. Um, you know, but I'm I'm um I think his credentials stating that he was a consultant does not give him the credibility that Bryn had because she wrote affidavits and she wrote search warrants. So, you know, I give her a little more credibility, and I think she was pretty reasonable. With, but I will um, say this, and I thought she was... in on half of it. 
Okay, well, one of the things that I had a problem with her suggesting is that I asked her, is it possible for a former president to illegally have classified documents in his possession? And she was like, she couldn't say yes or no. So I don't really think that should be. I mean, so she made it sound like it's almost impossible for a former president to steal anything. And I no. didn't like the way, I mean, she, she was running from that because that's what they're accusing him of. And right. the way she was, right. the way she was operating, she was operating in a manner that it would be impossible for him to commit a crime of espionage. That might have been at the beginning. I don't know if I missed that because I came in probably halfway through her conversation, but she was still seemed like a lot of things she said made sense. One of them that I don't know about was I agree with you on the FBI's. I mean, it says on line three of the warrant, um, and I've read it too. Um, the FBI's investigation has established that documents bearing classification markings um, were among the materials. They didn't say they think they're in there. They said right. they've established right. that they're in there now. So somebody was on the inside. Somebody saw the box. They saw a label on it and they told. I mean, it was might have been Secret Service. She also, that's, that's interesting you bring it up because she also stated that there was that they, according to her, the affidavit, there was no snitches in Trump's ranks. And I told her every legal analyst out there is suggesting that snitches are what caught him up. Did you hear the judge? Did you, did you hear the judge Napolitano breakdown of it that I've been playing? Yeah, I heard that part, but he doesn't know as much either. And he's as he's he's all of a sudden relevant because he wasn't much relevant when he was speaking out for the conservative sides. And he's not even a Fox analyst. I don't think he's a contributor to he Fox was. anymore. He, he, yeah, he, he used was. to be. He's yeah. not anymore. I, I don't think so, but maybe he is. I don't. I don't okay. know. But I. I watch but you would everything. assume that a former. CNN. You would assume that you would assume that a former judge could know his way around an affidavit. An affidavit. Well, Fed was he was. I don't know if he's a federal judge or if he was if he dealt with that kind of um, you know the documents. But this is the part that concerned me in the same paragraph though. Because he said the S about the investigation has established that documents bearing classification markings, which appear to contain national defense or information, were among the materials contained in the 15 boxes and were stored there. But the part where it says which appear to contain national NDI, OK, it appears to contain. Well, how do they know what's in the box? I mean, that's which appear unless somebody told them and actually looked in the box yeah, or maybe exactly. Nara. Or if Nara told him, I don't know. But how did they? How would they know that they appeared? Now that word "appear" is not a strong legal term. It appears like maybe it appears not to. It appears to appears not to. Um, so I don't know about whether he can walk. About what the other guy said. About whether he has, um, you know, like um, a blanket kind of um, um, declassification power. Um, but there's got to be something for a separation of powers. Now, now the reason why I'm I'm so you know I'm like you know how I stand. I've told you I'm Trump is not the best representation for the country or for uniting, and Biden isn't either. So this extreme part you said that the guy earlier Megaton said nobody of of substance. Well, you know Biden called MAGA semi-fascist. He didn't say the Proud Boys are semi-fascist. Right. He didn't right. say he said MAGA was semi-fascist. Now that was a yeah. that was um I think that was a slip up, and I think he politically I think that was a really bad thing to say. You just don't want to do that. I, that's not a uniter either. So I'm in the no. same regard. They're both. I think. Well, let me ask you this question. They might want to put the gloves back on. But let me, let me ask you this question. Let me ask you this question. In regards to what the ultra MAGA and all of the comments that Biden is saying that could be viewed as divisive, and I agree they are divisive towards MAGA. At the end of the day, I believe, and you can tell me if you think I'm getting this wrong, I believe we now have three parties, Democrats, Republicans, and MAGA. And the reason why I'm pointing out this is that even if Biden did not make those divisive comments toward MAGA, do you believe there's any way that somebody like President Biden could unify MAGA? Do you think they would give him the time of the day, regardless of what he said? Did I lose you that I, fast? I fast? know. I'm, no, no. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm measuring my words. I can guarantee okay. you that he won't do it if he doesn't make an effort. 
So you think it is possible that he could unify MAGA, though? If Well, it'll never happen if he doesn't make some kind of effort to bring back this country together. Because right okay. now, we're going at such a breakneck speed to one side, and I'm a big believer in checks and balances. And, I mean, I'm, I don't think either side needs all the power. Um, I think there's got to be a check. And I think the country feels that way, too, because of every midterm you know, election, um, non-presidential election. That's that seems to be, you know, the case. I'm just hoping that they do it this year because it's breakneck speed right now. Now, as far as the, the lineup, no, the FBI is not making it all up. I mean, it's it's there's somebody that said there's something in there, but we don't know what it is. And the document doesn't shed a lot more light. But everything is going to be is going to be so so magnified and so in, so micro inspected from both sides now that no matter what, it's going to be blown up. And it is. I mean, face it, the FBI had a bad week, man. They had, they had a bad week. Face it. They lost the mission. Wait, wait, wait a minute. They lost, what, the, F, they, they lost, they lost the agent, the guy, um, what's T-Bowl? Yeah. Um, yeah. They lost him. They lost the, they lost the Michigan case. And now Garland came out with a memo telling the, everybody to be careful about when they talk to Congress. You know, whistleblowing is OK on one side, but not the other. So, you know, that's 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 a they're having a bad week. And I've got to keep your finger on the pulse of the country. Um, this thing can change. It goes back and forth like the stock market. I think it's going to, right now. I think we're going to see a swing back towards as a possibility that um, there's going to be some surprises if, you know, it's whoever makes the last dumbest mistake, maybe, I think. <laughs> what about, let me ask you this. What do you think about the, the supposed red wave? You think that that is still on course to happen, or do you believe that's been reduced somewhat? Well, I read somewhere today that one out of four independents are turning, I mean, only or three out of four independents are turning Democratic over that over one issue, and of course that's abortion. Um, that that Dobbs decision, that's that is um, that is um, going to be I think you're going to see a lot of, uh, I think, conservative candidates start moving a little more towards the center. Um, and even I think you'll start seeing the same thing on the other side. I mean, not I mean, there may be baby steps, but I think they're going to realize, I think that the Democrats. What is the center? What is the center on, a, on well, the issue of they're abortion? Gonna, any 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 comment like the guy from um, that took off the Trump um, um, tweets or the Trump um, statements on his account, the things about the election and stuff, they're going to take you not you're going to see less of that spoke by conservatives. Um I think you're going to maybe see some Democrats lighten up on guns and stuff, maybe a little bit. But whatever it is, baby steps are going to be made for both parties. Yeah, I mean, but if you're you suggesting do. you can't do yeah, anything you're... unless you get elected, you can't. Do yeah, shit. but if you're suggesting that abortion is the primary issue, moving to the center on guns or on the election, the 2020 election, is not going to affect how people feel about abortion. How do you move to the center on that issue? which you're admitting is the primary issue. Well, there's a lot of, um, you know, um, concessions that the left could do and the right could do. Um, even Ginsburg admitted that Roe Wade was bad law and that it could be taken too far to include even full term elective abortions or partial birth. She said that. Yeah, but even in, even in Democratic, wait, but, so, but even in Democratic hey, states, even in Democratic states, there has there is never this full term abortion and people getting abortions in the ninth month. So that is not that has not been happening even in Democratic states. The I know Democrats that. Not, have but never there's been people that will that not say that, but there's people that may say that it's rare. That let's just narrow it to third trimester or viability. Let's just narrow it down to that part. And I know it's going to light up the comments now, but the um, let's let's say it's third trimester, whatever, when it when when a child's viable, because it, that happens in third tries. It does uh, whether legal or illegal. I don't know, but it shouldn't be codified by the federal level. And Ginsburg even admitted that it went too far. Now, did Dobbs go too far? I don't know. Um, Kansas, a conservative state, Kansas, a conservative state refused to ban abortion or add abortion laws 
um, or change it or make b- abortions banned in Kansas. Kansas, a conservative okay, yeah. state, that, right. that showed that it works at the state level. And if it does, well, then anybody you, that can I make would, this Texas, I don't care if yeah. it's Texas, I don't care if it's, um, you know, or, or whatever, Wyoming, or you name a, a solidly conservative state, common sense is going to be common sense when it comes to certain things. Now, making it as birth control, it shouldn't be. But I, we didn't talk about abortion. This wasn't the issue. I okay, well, let me, let me just, wait a minute. Let me get in here and just say this. I think that the the third trimester and late term abortion stuff is just simply not true. I don't even in liberal states that stuff is not happening, and no, they're using that was, as a reason. To go I know somebody that had I know somebody that had one. I'm sorry, they went to Atlanta, Georgia, paid four thousand dollars, and came back and told the daddy, "I got rid of the little bastard." Now that happened. Okay, that's 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 I'm telling you that happened, okay. um, and that and that's one of four that that girl's had. So I know another girl's had nine. Um, so it becomes so much. Whoa, I don't know. Whoa, 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 and I didn't whoa. want to talk you, you, about wait, this. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You know somebody that you're suggesting that has had nine pregnancy terminations? That's exactly right. It's sad. Yeah, you've been it's how, many, how, many, how, many, how many pregnancy terminations? I, I guess we're not women, but I'd be curious if any women are in the audience. How many pregnancy terminations can a human body handle before it's incapable of having a, a child altogether? Nine? No, not, nine, not, not nine third trimesters. I'm talking about nine abortions. You know I'm not talking about third trimesters. Okay, I, I get about, it. Just, just, I want to clear that up. Okay. Wow. I, there's, a, there's a 15 club, I believe. But either way, oh <laughs> either way, I'm not saying that right. good, bad, or indifferent. That's not the discussion. I don't want to go there because it's so sensitive, and I know it's. I'm so just pro life for me, and you you live with your own conscience. Okay, that's the way 15. I live by that. A fifteen the, club. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry, brother. All right, but I gotta move it on fast, pass. Okay, I gotta man. move it on. All right. wow. It's always good talking to you. It always is. I appreciate is. I you holding, to, man. I appreciate that. Out. Catch you next time. The, um... uh, I just clipped him at the end. Uh, he said that there is a, and I see somebody in the comments, uh, what is that, Special K83 said, not funny. No, it's not. But I've never heard of that. He's suggesting that there is a club, not a physical club, not a, you know, a gathering, but there are people who have had as many as 15 pregnancy terminations, is what he's saying. I... <laughs> My guess, I would, I would immediately push back and say I don't think it's true. But then again, he obviously would know things in his life that I don't know, and vice versa. So if he's suggesting that there are women that have had fifteen pregnancy terminations, I, I just wonder, can a human body handle that? Now he's not talking third trimester or far along. You know, maybe six weeks or something like that. But can you, can you keep doing that? I mean, after a while, doesn't your body, the amount of scar tissue and things like that, prevent? It seems like it would make you infertile if you kept doing that. But I don't know. I just never heard of that before. Uh, going to Z Lady. This is a female. I would be curious to hear that. 15, 15 abortions for somebody. I wow. have to, re- okay, I have to research that to find out if that's true. I would do. I would do. 15. Wow. I tell you, you never so, know. Go ahead. Um. So yeah, a ma- dark maga, 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 whatever. It's it'll die out. Um, but right now, it's a trend, so people are attracted to it. You know, um, if you go on to Trump's social media, you know he's still promoting and pushing for that that the election was stolen. You know, he's yeah. he's spewing Everybody a lot of hate. That, yeah. He's even been blocked from Google. Um, he's lost 60 lawsuits uh, trying to claim that there was fraud, that those have been lost, all of them. Um, so he's still promoting this, you know, conspiracy that the election was stolen. And he's still ranting. I mean, as of five hours yeah. ago, he's talking about let's reclaim what was stolen. Now, let's say you moved MAGA away. Let's go ahead and divide this up. Let's say there's 60,000 MAGA people. Okay, whatever. The right and the left are still going to go on. These trends that happen throughout history, they can be dangerous, but they're going to fade away because people are going to wake up and realize, hey, it's all a joke. 
and it didn't amount to anything, they're going to realize that Trump didn't do anything he said he was going to do. I'm a Republican. And I guarantee you, I watched him like a fine tooth and he didn't do anything he said he was going to do. Did you support Trump in 2016? I voted. What's that? Go ahead. No, no, no. You go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, you supported him in 2016? I did because I wanted to believe that, hey, it's something different, something new. Let's try it out. 2020. Who did you vote for in 2020? The man that's our president today, Biden. Okay. All right. right. Okay. So you you do understand Biden is not implementing any conservative policies. How happy are you with Biden as president? Or were you just doing it to get rid of Trump? the, The way that Trump is he's chaotic he's trouble he's drama his whole family's drama and he's bringing that onto the american people and i'm tired of it i was tired of it i don't need to hear all this stuff that's going on with him he's he's ego driven um throughout his whole life it's always been me 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 you know he never went without um he didn't have any trouble growing up he had all the money he needed but He doesn't relate to the little people. He doesn't. And he doesn't care either. So you don't think that Trump cares about the average Joe in America? I don't. Heck no. Heck no. So so when he when he was his phrase, make America great. I mean, if he doesn't care about the average man, what do you think he meant? Make America great is just a slogan. Anybody can come up with that. Slogan but, that it it seemed to be good at the time. Now, wow. so you're saying it's, you're saying it's an empty mm-hmm. slogan. So let me ask you this then, based on what I have behind me with the, with the FBI alleging that he had classified documents and potentially broke laws. Do you think they're just making that all up, or you think there's some there's actually some fire where the smoke is coming from? No, there's fire there. Everybody, he has the right to trial by jury, right? So right. um, they're going by the legal proceedings. There's evidence there. They have to get it, get it. And he's even trying to stop them from looking further into those documents. So if there is nothing there, then why is he stopping them? Why does he want to stop them from continuing to investigate? So yeah, well, they're, doing, they're going to do what they got to do. Mm-hmm. Well, he's trying to stop it because he's, he's suggesting this all a witch hunt and that, you know, it's kind of. It's kind of a, I forget what they used to call them, where you get, you go through trial, but it's all a sham and they already had the, the outcome is already determined. He's suggesting that it's like that, that he's not going to get a fair shake no matter what. No, he's, (laughs) it's so funny. If people research Trump, he still owes, you know, his social media that he has, he still owes over $2 million to people who are helping him with that. He is so far in debt, it's not funny. I mean, he is, it's outrageous how people follow him like he's a god. And if they only knew the dirt that he carries with him. Um, well, I someone, like I said, someone I brought that up. Though. Yeah, someone brought that up earlier this evening in this broadcast. That it's a cult. His That's right. Said it's a cult. To... I was reading oh. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. So no, someone brought up earlier that his truth, his truth social network, that he's indebted to the host of that network by I think they said one point six million or something like that. So well, it sounds kind of like one point six million, but it just went up to two point five million. So yes, wow. Because he, he owes every time it's growing. It, it, as much as it grows, he still owes. He's still owe, owing these people. So it's like he owes a lot of people money. But that's, but see, that's Trump's life research him he's been in and out of the courts ever since he was 18 years old this is what he knows you know but would you would you not agree that he's a winner when it comes to courts though he's been doing for a guy who's been in and out of courts he's done pretty damn well well he's done well in the sense that he's been able to pay off people so yeah i guess in a way you have the money to pay people off certainly i guess you can win yeah you can win that way So at the yeah, end of the day, he with, with all of won't these... run. He definitely is not going to win again. He he's definitely losing, um, and I I will not vote for him. I will probably go for like uh, DeSantis or somebody like that. But Trump will not uh, be back as a president. So eventually, MAGA, dark MAGA, whatever, whatever, it'll be a trend. It'll fade out within four years. 
What is dark MAGA? What is that? Dark my dark MAGA. What that is is basically a cult. It's a following of basically we're going to take back what was taken from us. Any means possible it has a far right agenda, alt right, for instance. So it's very, very, very chaotic, very violent. I don't agree with it as a Republican. What, what, I don't and agree what do what does this what does this group of people believe what, that was taken from them? I'm I'm new to all this. I'm totally ignorant. Of this. So this dark mega group you're suggesting that wants to take back what was stolen from them. Is it the election? What was taken from them? It could be any anything that where they lose power was taken. Any power that's taken from them. That would they stolen elections, conspiracy theories, whatever they feel was taken from them um, unlawfully is dark MAGA. So basically it could be like a lie and they're gonna still believe it. Dark MAGA. But that's basically okay. what dark dark MAGA is. It's it's nothing to be proud about. It's nothing to promote, or at least I won't. I, I will never promote something like that. And in Ken in the comments, Ken Boone, uh, Boone me, you said, come on, host, you should know this. Maybe I should, but I don't. I've heard Biden say it, but I didn't know. I, I'm curious about the definition to hear folks define it. I've heard him. I mean, obviously, Biden has no love for MAGA. I get that, but Dark MAGA? I, I mean, it just sounds like MAGA on steroids or, you know, MAGA vampires or something. So I, I'm it's curious a, it's a to get cult. the definition. It's a, it's, a, it's a detriment to our society. You know, it's almost like saying uh, the KKK is a cult. That would be like a dark MAGA. Same thing. I, I don't agree with it. I think it's foolish. Wow. I think it's dangerous. I think it's ridiculous. But if you go on to Trump's social media, you would understand what dark MAGA is. They're basically brainwashed to believe everything he says and they don't give two flips about what the truth is. And that's So that's what nice. about So how do you handle a comment like Victor Ladon in the comments that they're just trying to find a boogeyman. The liberals are just trying to find a boogeyman to make MAGA or to make the Republicans look bad. How do you handle a comment like that? Trying to find a boogeyman. I don't even understand yeah, just, comment. Like you're trying to galvanize Democrats by by fear mongering. A boogeyman. Say dark MAGA is going to come and go far right. You know, white supremacy. All of the, all of the, all of the 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 keywords you want to throw out to make a boogeyman. How would you handle someone saying that? That you're just trying to find a boogeyman. <laughs> I, I think it's funny. I, it's not. It's not about scaring the left. I mean, I think people like myself with common sense and real love for the country will look away from that and vote people out like Trump and his followers. I mean, you need people with common sense policies such as myself and other Republicans. You need more Bush Bushes. I guess you could say Bushes because I'm from the Bush era. Yeah, you may not agree with it all, but we're not alt-right. We're not far right to where we fall off the cliff you know we're not into conspiracy theories we're not into division trump is all that and some more so no i don't i don't pay too much mind of that um but i'll tell you what trump won't ever run again i can guarantee you that guarantee you, why 100%. not all right i gotta move it on but before we before I, I, all right i gotta move it on before i let you go why do you think trump is not going to be on the ballot ever again because he has too many lawsuits. He's caught up with too much. Um, too many lawsuits are open. Too much debt. He won't ever come back. Wow. Mm -mm. All he'll right. There you, there you have it, folks. That is a conservative suggesting that Trump is in the history. So how will history judge Trump? You think we'll ever have a USS Trump? You ever have elementary oh, school? He'll go down in history. He'll go down in history okay. as one of the most divisive, chaotic, troubled presidents filled with lawsuits conspiracy theories um just he didn't accomplish much for the american people it'll go down in history as a failed presidency for sure oh, mm -hmm, okay for sure. all right anytime see lady anytime good talk have a good one all right look at in the comments one of the worst ever somebody said drama king trump is coming his supporters, he, wait a minute, Trump is, oh, Trump is conning a con job. Trump is conning his supporters. He ain't running. Well, I guess I'd have to wonder if he's not running, 
Is he, I don't believe so, but is he accountable for all of the millions that he's raising right now? I mean, how much money did he raise to stop the steal? I mean, is he accountable? I mean, you're talking literally hundreds of millions of dollars. Just a question. Uh, we'll go right back to the box. Chief Judge. Judge. Like a new caller. Chief Judge Political. Okay. Yeah. Judge. Yeah, it's me. I changed, I call you that. <laughs> I changed my name. Go ahead. What'd you say? I changed my name. Okay. Yeah. That, That's a hell of a name, you bitch. I know. Well, they were calling me. Uh, my name was always political. And then uh, some people in my life started calling me Judge. And then I just put Chief on there. Why not? Chief Judge Political. So that's my that's my new All name right, right now. Only thing I All would, right, Chief. Only so thing I would say. I'm, I'm asking you. Go okay, ahead. go ahead. No, well, I'm just saying, asking you. <laughs> we got a delay, obviously. Yeah. You do your thing. Go. I would just say my, my ruling here, my ruling would be that I agree that the parties are going to be hard to come together because – it's total opposite thinking. Like we said, we believe January 6th was a, I believe it was a domestic terrorist attack. I think it was a sad day. Other people look at it as a tourist visit, right? So that's two different ways of looking at the same thing. Um, right. you know, I look at I look at Republicans and I see authoritarianism when they are trying to restrict access to the ballot box. So trying to take power and make Donald Trump a quote unquote dictator. On the other side of it, you see Democrats trying to expand voting access. Both of us are trying to get towards election equality, but the way of getting there is completely opposite. So well, that's what. Wait a minute. If you're saying that the republic, if you believe the Republicans are trying to restrict voting access, how could that be a push towards equality? No, 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 no. I was uh, no. Well, what I'm saying was is. We all want elect election integrity, right? Right. The way, of, the way of going about that, I think, is different on both sides. One okay. party see one party says to get to get there, we need to restrict voting access. We need to put up more hurdles. We need to put up more barriers. And the other side says, let's expand voting access. Let let let's let's do same day res registration. Let's do all these different things. The goal is the same, but the way of going about it is totally different. That's what I was. So let me here. ask you this, okay? So let me in the comments, Amanda Hug and Kiss, love the name Hug and Kiss. Amanda Hug and Kiss asks, "What ballot restrictions are you talking about?" In other words, the Republican Party, in her view, is not putting up any restrictions. Okay. What kind of restrictions are you talking well, about? Well, what the re what the regime is doing is in a place like Texas, they okay. are having one ballot box per county. OK, Harris County, which is outside of Dallas, has over two point three, maybe almost two point five million registered voters. OK, mm -hmm. but another county that's up in rural America only maybe has 10,000, 20,000. Right. They right. both both of those are getting one ballot box to drop off their ballot. So you would have to admit that in Harris County. It's going to be harder to drop off your ballot. It's going to be a longer wait. Yeah. It, 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 and they have also restricted the time of when you can drop off that ballot. So just keep putting up. They, they're they continuing to put up barriers to try to. I mean, they're, when I say restrict, it's not that they're saying you can't vote. It's right. putting up. It's putting up obstacles. I mean, a prime example is what we saw in Texas. They're trying also. to dissuade you. What you're saying is they're trying to dissuade you from casting a ballot, make right, you wait in right, line too right. long or stand out in the heat or something like that. Right. So give their give their people in their counties as much access to the ballot box as possible. But in Democratic counties, come up with these laws for voter integrity, right? That's the reason they say they're doing it. To restrict or to slow down the voting. So that their people can get in. It becomes somewhat of a dictatorship. That's why I say it's an authoritarian type of thinking, because Donald Trump is the leader of the Republican Party. I don't know where he got that from. I mean, we all know that he's the leader of the Republican Party. And I just until, had a caller suggesting I just had a caller suggesting he's not. Yeah, I heard that. I heard that. <laughs> until he, until he bows down and says, DeSantis, you are my chosen one. 
that's when they will will jump ship. But until then, he will always, and I agree with you, even if DeSantis came out, spoke out against Trump, won the nomination, Trump still would tell his people, do not follow him. Do not follow him. Yeah. Because I, I didn't give you permission. I didn't give you permission. That's why I say about the authoritarianism. And I won't keep you long, but another point that I wanted to make was with Liz Cheney. It's not that we worship her. I respect her because she's a real conservative, in my opinion. She stands for the Republican values. I have no problem with people who believe in small government. We can go down the list of conservatism. We're not seeing that in the in the Republican Party that we see now. It's a total, I don't want to say blindness, but it is a blindness to just follow one man. I mean, she voted with him 90% of the time. She votes against him or says something they don't like once. They kick her out of leadership. She continues to stand on what she believes, so they kick her out of Congress. So, so you're suggesting that, and I think I may have said this before too, that MAGA, unlike the Republican Party, MAGA is not voted based on principle. It's based on one man. Right. So let me ask you this. Let's say something happened to Trump, passed away, mental issues, or just decided he's not going to be in the political sphere, or got locked up. Who could resume or who could who could keep MAGA going without President Trump? Somebody else that could still do the job under the umbrella the of MAGA. Do, I think the person who could still do the job is DeSantis. Because me personally, DeSantis doesn't have an original thought. He mimics what he sees. He knows what people like, so he's giving them what they want. He's just saying it a lot calmer, a lot cleaner. I mean, prime example is the lady that was on here before. She said... Well, I'm a Republican. I don't like Trump. You know, I don't like the things that he did. But she said, but if DeSantis is on the ballot, I would vote for him. Right. Yeah. Because he still gives them what they want without the the hatred and the open bigotry and things like that. So that's why I said that he takes that. You look at the Democratic Party. You have the far left. You have the ALCs of the world, which that's not far left. But you know what I'm saying? Then you have in, the this, country, ground. in this country, that's far left. Right. Right. And then you have the middle ground, which would be like a Joe Biden, Amy Klobuchar, you know, middle middle type Democrats. And then you have conservative Democrats. You got, you know, Kristen Sinema and Joe Manchin. So there's a ideal and exchange of, of, of values in the Republican Party. It's either you support Trump or you don't. If you don't support Trump, yeah. you're not a, 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 a Republican. You're a what they call rhino. Uh, you're a rhino. Rhino. So, yeah. you know, all I would say is to the people for my closing here is that we have to realize that at this point it's beyond policy. I understand that inflation is bad. I understand that a lot of policies that Biden has done hasn't been the greatest. But if we don't have a country and we don't have democracy, none of it matters. None of it matters. So you, I mean, so you are suggesting that President Trump is indeed a threat to democracy as a whole. Yes, Do you believe yes, that? Yes. I mean, when you so discord in our you know when 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 he lost the election he was going around telling people this was a third world country yeah he you did don't say do that. that you don't you yeah. don't you don't downgrade your own country at the end of the day it's still your own country so i would have had a lot more respect if trump would have came out and said look just like hillary did just like you know al gore did look i think some funny stuff went on but He's going to be the president of the United States. Let's see how they do. I wish you luck, right? And then when gas prices are high and inflation is high, then you can sit and talk about what Joe Biden's not doing right. However, that's not what we're talking about. Like you said, we're talking about January 6th. So yeah. he, he didn't think it out. He didn't think it out. He didn't think it out. So Yeah, and I don't, I would, and I don't see a solution to that. I don't, I mean, because he's going to continue suggesting that the, even if Trump was to win again in 2024, he would still continue suggesting that the election was stolen from him in 2020. So he, he's going to take that to his grave. That's that's or, never going or, to end. In, in, only thing I would say yeah, to you before we, we end here is okay. that Democrats are going to do pretty well in, 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 in the midterms. And it's getting better and better by the day. I mean, I know you, you don't follow Joe Biden a lot. His approval rating is, is, is getting better. I mean, it's not astronomical.
but it's gone from what thirty eight percent. It's actually, actually, it's yeah, he's in the forties now. He's actually his yeah. his, his polls are his poll numbers are better than Trump's when he left office. But right. this is a recent thing. This is not they haven't been at that rate for even a couple months. This is very recent. What they like, what Democrats like, is when he when he says that stuff like. Trump is, you know, MAGA is and uh is fascist and things like they like that. That that's what that's, they like. That's you, divisiveness, though. Doesn't that's matter. Divisive. Though. Divisiveness. I hate to say it, but it's where we're at. I mean, when, like I said, when when you have one side believes something and the other believes another, you have to choose a side. Like you said, with the guy who said, um, "There's a middle ground. We have to find a middle ground for abortion." There's no middle ground. Either you support it yeah. or you don't. It's the left or That's right. Bad. I wish there was middle ground, but there wasn't. All right, I'll talk to you later. Oh, anytime, Chief. All Come right. on back through. Appreciate it. That's bad what he was saying. Middle ground. We're in trouble. We're in trouble, folks. But uh, let me look in the comments. Somebody says, stop supporting pedos. Tiana, that is a conspiracy right there that I agree with. Uh, what the hell was his name? Chris Christie said in his book, former New Jersey governor Chris Christie stated that for the Republican Party to get back on track, they got to stop being, they got to become the party of the truth, is what he said. And when it, in that chapter, he was talking about stop promoting those ridiculous conspiracies like that, that every liberal person you do not like is abusing children, up to and including Biden. I mean, you guys have accused everybody on the liberal side of the aisle. Hillary Clinton is drinking her blood and all this crazy stuff. You want to talk about liberals wrongfully calling folks racist and all this crazy stuff, and you're doing that? I mean, that right there, just it just simply needs to stop. Everybody knows that that crap is not true. But that is from the, I don't want to, it's certainly not Republicans. I don't even want to say MAGA, so to speak. That's QAnon type stuff, which is, if I guess if there was a such thing as a dark group, dark MAGA, whatever the hell they're talking about, the QAnon stuff, and because I talk to so many right wingers, so many Republicans in, in MAGA, I have been exposed to an exceptional amount of QAnon material. That stuff is dark. That stuff is end of the world Armageddon type stuff. And if whatever the party is, whatever principles you guys stand for, you need to get that out of your party. You, you really do. You want to talk about witch hunts on President Trump? How many impeachments went nowhere? How many cases went nowhere? How much shit has come from QAnon that has went nowhere? Trump was going to take back the office in February. The military was going to arrest Nancy Pelosi and, uh, and uh, Chuck Schumer. How many things has QAnon said that has not come true? If you can see the FBI the DOJ and some of these federal organizations as it, as lacking credibility because they say a lot of shit that doesn't happen. But you follow Q with all of the stuff that they say it doesn't take place that is insanely ridiculous. I had a caller on here the other day that suggest when I asked him, well, who is Q? He suggested that the guy was Robert Kennedy Jr. You know, the Kennedy that died in a plane crash in the 1990s. He believed that man faked his death, and that is who Q is. So I'm just simply telling you, you, don't criticize the FBI, the DOJ, or some of these government organizations when you got that shit in your party. And by the way, folks, I'm going to tell you this. I am going to start doing what I call a TikTok shorts because I have a YouTube page, the Handsome Liberal YouTube, where all of these shows are re-broadcast uh, in their entirety, so you can always go over there and see yourself telling me off or whatever, but... I'm going to start doing some shorts. Some of my interesting callers, it's only going to be 10 or 15 minutes because that's how long most of my callers come on here. And when, when I got some real interesting folks, ones who really make me look bad, tell me off, that's fine. Or folks like that, the QAnon folks. I'm going to start having what I refer to as an interesting caller section. So feel free to go over to YouTube. That's going to be starting up soon. Anyway. Listen, I got to get up and go to work in the morning. Appreciate you guys rolling with your boy. It's always been a pleasure. It's your boy, Tim, the handsome liberal. For you guys who have not followed the channel, this is what we tend to do most weeknights starting at 7 p.m. Central. Like I always say, all the time, you can be anywhere you want to on social media, but I'm always happy. Yeah, thank you for that ad mustache. 
Always happy for you guys to come here and chat with your boy. I learn a lot from you folks. Even my MAGA folks, that's who I prefer talking to. I learn a lot from MAGA. Everything from 2000 News on down, I watch a lot of that shit. Mike Lindell's Cyber Symposium, you guys recommend shit to me all the time. And um, that's what it's all about. It's not about trying to tell you I'm always right or even thinking you're always right. It's about having a somewhat of a dialogue because I strongly believe in Washington they're not doing this. So if we can do this even in our little tiny corner of social media, it gives us the jump, gives us an out where they need to do this. We need to have folks from both sides of the aisle doing more than just calling each other names. Catch you guys tomorrow. It's been a pleasure.